I wouldn't worry about getting them. Okay, well, we don't have to say what yeah. store it is. Well, there is a there's only store. Two Glock stores. Oh, oh, you just said Glock store. But there's only two. If I walked into a building and there was three employees in there, and you're like, hey, the new Glock AR-15 came out, and all three of them, after being in the store for 10 minutes and they hadn't acknowledged me, and they just look up while they're reading magazines and shit, they just look up and they're like, yeah, we hear that shit every day and just look down. Especially if, if, the, if it's, I'm the only person in the store, so you guys obviously are not busy doing business. You have three fucking employees who have not tried to help a customer at all. At all. I'd have been like, hey, uh, you guys know you're fired, right? The, I think that I think the, the critical thing there, though, the difference is um, is you don't leave the property. So I, I think a lot of people don't realize this, is that John never leaves. They know but, I leave. They see videos no, no, no. of it all the Here's time. A, that's, a, that's a lie. I left last night. That's a lie. He, but what I'm saying is... You don't leave. You don't leave unless you have a destination in mind. And when you do leave, like if you go, here's an example. It, like if you were to go to the M and M store, like if John Willis is like, where's there in the mall at? at I don't, uh, I'm thinking the one in Vegas, but I, but I'm just saying, if you were to go to the M and M store, nine times out of ten, if you're going to a specific location that sells a specific thing, you're doing that at a patronage from someone. You're doing it. You're usually doing that out of patronage because you know the brand, owner, brand loyalty, right? You know the guy who owns the the product, and you're not. You don't just go to me personally. You mean? Yeah, John Willis personally. John Willis doesn't just go to some random gym. He goes to the gym because he knows the owner of the gym and likes the owner of the gym. So he's he gives that he gives the respect to the the ownership of said thing, and so. I think that's the difference. When you walk into the place, you usually know who who the owner is, usually, right? You you you, and even if you don't know, like that's the other thing that is interesting about you is even if you don't know the owner, but you like the place, you work the staff until you do know the owner. So there's always a there's always like a I don't I don't want to call it a patronage, but a there's always like a a push to the that the owner knows that you are, you have brand loyalty, and you will show up with forty people to eat dinner, even though it's seafood, and I don't like any seafood, and I got to eat these little stupid but, wagyu but, steaks that don't. <laughs> wagyu they're just steaks. Teen, they're just little teeny things. <laughs> but when you know, three. when you know the owner, they will make you shit that is not one hundred percent true. One hundred percent true. I I seen what was the place in Vegas that we went to? Nobu. Nobu was it Nobu? We've been to a lot of places what was in the, Vegas. No, but what was the place that... Uh, where I'm like, hey, what's the craziest shit you have? No, no, it's... And they brought I, out it, live octopus, and the, they brought out these live fucking crabs. I'm like, okay, those are cool. What do we do with them? He's like, you eat them. I'm like, yeah, but they're alive. Uh, maybe it was Nobu, but it, but it was like the place where there wasn't a menu. It was just like a 12-course... That was Nobu. Because yeah. if you any high-end restaurant you go to, they'll have they'll, it'll call it a chef's tour or a chef flight. And then they'll be, and they, they always ask us early, um, do you want more seafood? Do you want chicken? Do you want steak? Do you want all raw? Do you want, um, do you have any allergies? You know, so they, they kind of pull everybody at the table. Yeah, that was a, it was a terrible experience for me. Shut the fuck there up. There was fucking, there were sea creatures crawling across the table and shit. <sighs> Didn't you have black cod? No, I did not eat any what did seafood. You, yeah, but you ate. You ate um why we had Wagyu hot rocks. They had that where you yeah that's what I'm saying. Wagyu uh, I wouldn't really call them hot rocks. They were the size of a starburst. I was like stealing other people's no no Wagyu. No, no, no no. They bring out these fucking giant rocks. <laughs> yeah, and then you throw that the are shit. burning hot, and then you put the strips. Yeah, of meat you have on to there. you have to cook it yourself. Jesus, they would have cooked it for you. That's some, it's just a were you there? It's just a hot mess when John's eating seafood. Because were you there with when Eli was there and everybody was there? Eli and Justin. I, maybe I don't remember Eli. I'm like, why is this bill fifteen thousand dollars? I just, I just know that. Well, because there was a, we had a big table. Those motherfuckers were drinking hundred dollar a glass. Fucking, uh, I don't know what they were drinking, but when I tasted it, I'm like, I don't know how you can drink this. It smell, it tastes like furniture cleaner mixed with a dirty fucking catcher's mat. Like it, it yeah, literally tastes like a dirty leather ball glove. And like that shit that your mom used to clean wooden furniture with. That definitely sounds like uh, those guys. Like I can see those guys drinking 
And that does sound like, I, I think if that description alone, hundred bucks. Yeah. They're easy. like, yeah. And there was like 40 of them on there. I'm like, I didn't ask them what costs 15 grand, but I'm like, what the fuck was $15,000 on this motherfucker? They do this, uh, they call it. You shit. did have a lot of people though. I mean, we did, we did. We did. It was an amazing time too. And we still talk about it. Yeah. He's like a lot of people. My goal when we took, especially when we took a kid that worked for us out of town, my goal was to sit down and have a meal that they will talk about for the rest, for rest of their, of their lives. lives. Yeah. Or that they don't have the capability of ever getting again. They well, could, I mean, they, they could, could if yeah, they, they want could. to. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, we had, um, what was that kid that you saw always pull his shorts up like Daisy Dukes? Oh, are you, you're local. Yes. Right. Sells cars like a madman. Yes. Oh man. I cannot think of his name. He's like, he, he reminded me like howdy doody. Yeah. No, I, same thing. Um, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. Hey bro, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. What did we call I'm him? I'm old. I've so, been blown up. So that guy, um, has done really well. He's, yeah. he's currently, I believe, the last I saw, he is selling uh, internet cable. Internet cable? I, I, I guarantee you if he left the car lot, yeah. he's making way more we're money more selling money. it. Yeah, this kid's going to do shit. Yeah, I, he was flipping cars while he was here. <laughs> he, yeah, that kid owned that kid owned probably 20 cars in the time that he worked here for a couple of years. Um, and he came and wanted to work. He, his dad, I believe his father, brought him here and said, hey, can my son have a job here? And I want to say he was 13 when we when he started coming he was around. Young. And uh, Larry Larry Hickey, um, who moved to Florida, did all of our small motor stuff, he knew that kid and brought him in here. <clears throat> and um, that kid left here, worked at a gun shop for a while, um, and I want to say at like 18 years old, he bought a house. Like the kid owns, he owns a, a property here, house, a little bit of property, garage and everything, like a real home. Not, right. Not like a trade. No, he was, I know he was, yeah. he was flipping, he was flipping pretty good. Always. Always, up. yeah. Trading up. Always, yeah. Like, yeah. Very, very cool. But that, yeah, that would be a meal that he would, I bet he still talks about it. At, at some point he will when yeah. he's around the right people. Yeah, I bet he still talks about it. Yeah. So, I, if I walked in a store and there was three employees sitting there and they, they were not servicing the customer at all, I'd be like, hey, you guys, you, you know you're fired, right? And they'd be like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, no, really, you can go ahead and pack your shit up. You're, you're not going to, you might be here today, but you're not going to be here anymore. You're fired. Like, yeah, that was the, I mean, the reality of that, that episode was I was just, I was, the only reason why I was surprised was because no one was in there, right? And so you would think, if you you would you would think that if you've been sitting behind the you've been sitting behind the counter it was it was probably ten o'clock so they they had been working for they've been there for a minute nobody was in there nobody was nobody was on the indoor range nobody was in the shop and <clears throat> when I walked in I my questions were directed towards them as far as you know having guns that were not Glocks and uh, and again. Glock is the one that put the drawing out of of the Glock so, AR-15. So why would you think that's funny? You've had your Glock AR-15 for over a year now, right? No, I don't have one. Uh, I don't. I don't have one. They, I, they, I don't, they haven't come out with one yet. I thought you have. I thought you have one. That's what I was going to ask: is how you got that when nobody has them yet. No, I don't. I don't have one. Hmm. Hmm. I don't have one. So hmm. who's who's all AR-15s were those in there? <clears throat> oh, that's everybody's in the store. Uh, it was just random, random, you know, it was Daniel defenses and stuff like that. I mean, they were high end AR 15s, but, so the, but the centerpiece, the focal point of the store where you come in was AR 15s. It was AR 15s. That's weird. Yeah. It wasn't like a giant Glock banner or anything. No, that, I mean, the, the weird part about the, the weird part about that is Glocks were kind of, <sighs> it's not a picture. It wasn't a picture of Lenny I, McGill. No, it was not a picture of Lenny McKill. I, that is the, funny that you say I know the owner. Yeah. Because I actually didn't think about that, but we do in yeah, fact, you do know, in fact the owner. know the owner. I know the owner. And he might remember me from Strider Days. Pierre uh I don't know if Pierre had dinner with him, but Pierre was in a restaurant and spoke to Lenny, I don't know, a couple months ago when he had uh, I don't know if he lives in town here now or not, but I remember Lenny from all the Del Mar gun shows. Do you remember uh yeah. Jim Ramsey? I remember Ramsey. Yeah. So that's how I met. I wonder if he. I wonder if Ramsey's still doing M14s and if he's still doing guns. So as a as a young man walking into the gun show, Jim Ramsey looked like an action movie hero. Like he he was big and 
had his shit together, yeah. and he was just he was what you would want to be as a young man. That's how you would want to look. Is and like it, and you figure you think about that time frame, <clears throat> like the the time frame that the nineties time frame, mm -hmm. early nineties, yeah. early nineties time frame. His M fourteen was the M fourteen you wanted. Yes, like, that's absolutely. the one you. That's the one you wanted. That's the one you wanted to get. But you know, as a young marine that wasn't getting paid very much, they were expensive. Yeah, thousands of dollars. Yeah. But I remember talking to Jim Ramsey, and when I started building gear, I showed it to Jim, and that's how I met Dwayne. I mm. met I because he had Strider knives on the yeah. Table. I would assume that and yeah. Strider knives were two hundred and seventy five dollars back then, and I actually traded Jim Ramsey some gear to get my first Strider knife, and that's when we started Jim, and it was Jim like Dwayne was in Bosnia or wherever right overseas, right okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Mick was somewhere else, <clears throat> so my liaison to Strider Knives was Jim Ramsey. He's like, man, and, and, and like a, a kid, not being an asshole, but like, why are these knives 275 bucks? And he's like, oh, you can hack the legs off of tables. You can hit chain with them. You can do all this shit. But I, looking back, I don't recall him doing it, right? I don't recall seeing it. Well, we would have them at our booth when we started doing Del Mar Gun Show, and guys are like, what knife is that? I'm like, it's a Strider knife. How much is it? It's not for sale. And I, we would cut the legs off of tables and yeah. shit. Like yeah. they changed all of the rules on all of the um, crossroads of the West gun shows. They added like two pages of the paperwork that they would give you when you would sign up because of us destroying shit with Strider knives. And then when Dwayne came home, we were at a Pomona gun show and the Pomona gun show was really cool because it was just so enormous. You could go seven miles of tables. You could go to that show and for an entire weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and still not see all the shit. And if you found something, like, you know when you go to the gun show, the first, well, most of people listening now probably they don't even, yeah, they don't have even gun know. shows anymore. You would go to the gun show and see something you want, and you're like, oh, I'm, there might be something better. I better wait. But we didn't have phones. There was no yeah. phone. So you couldn't just be like, aisle four, and you didn't write that shit down. So you'd spend half the day trying to find that thing that you yeah. wanted to buy. Sunday you're running around looking for the where the where the hell was that? And you don't and you don't know if you just haven't found the proper booth, if you're in the wrong building, or the dude sold it because yeah. you don't have a clue. Yeah, and you I'm know going. it's like going to shot show to go to try to find that booth you saw the day before. And what I you know what I learned I learned a valuable lesson from Josh Strider Josh um, that and I never even thought about this that he's like. He talks about the the gun show in Del Mar too, or not Del Mar, it, Pomona gun Pomona, show. Pomona gun show, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, you don't go on at the gun show. You want to buy guns? Don't go on the gun show." I'm like, "Yeah, but that's where the guns are." He's like, "Uh, uh the tunnel." Mm -hmm. he goes, you just stand in the tunnel. He goes, "Get all the cash you can get your hands on and just stand in the tunnel." Guns will walk by you all day, and those are the people that want to make a deal because they don't want to go in there and walk around with their gun. He goes, that's where he goes, that's where the majority of the guns I I bought back in the day were purchased from that fucking tunnel. And I'm like, God damn it. And then I, I saw the the Tennessee version of the tunnel when I first got here. At the back of the gun show. Yeah, by the at, bathrooms. Right by the bathrooms, man. You 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 walk all the tables and they're like yeah, you got to do this paperwork and blah, blah, blah. You're walking by all the tables and then you get to the bathroom and it's like a, it's like, a, <laughs> it's like a collection of perverts. They got their jackets open and they got all their, their guns hanging on the jacket. And they're like, Hey, these are for sale. Like the stolen yeah, watches. These are for sale right here, buddy at the bathroom. But yeah, uh, it, the, the Pomona gun show was, I have, you know, the crazy thing is people, people poo poo on California. And again, California does suck. It's a terrible state. But, man, I have never seen a gun show that has ever even come close to Pomona anywhere else in the United States. Like, you would think, Vegas, gun show, it's going to be badass. They got machine guns in Vegas. Yep. No, it's just it a, was, it's a uh, teeny little. Cashman Field was yeah, where we it's, went. It's a teeny little gun show. You went and, over and did shows. We did a few yeah, shows we did shows. I, I was, you know, it, there is cool shit, but under impressed. I mean, fuck, the first. It was small. It was yeah. small. The first Pomona gun show I went to, there was a dude that had three World War II flamethrowers that he was selling. I've never seen a flamethrower at a gun show, except Pomona. Uh, so Pomona was badass. And even here, Tennessee, you think, man, you can you can private party sale firearms in Tennessee. So 
and it's a free state, so you'd think you would go to a gun show and all the crazy shit would be there. Like you would see HK 33s and all. Nope. No, it's not. It's, it's very it's, underwhelming. It's, it's very underwhelming. When we, I, I, we went to, because it, they've, like you, you might not even know, the fairgrounds for Nashville is not even there anymore. They demoed it. Did they really? And there's a giant soccer stadium. And then they built this new pavilion, which is very nice. And that's where they have the Tennessee, the Nashville flea market and the antique shows and the CrossFit stuff. Nice venue, but it's not where it was. Um, and coming to Tennessee and going to, I went, with a, I went to a gun show in Jackson with James. And I'm like, where's the rest of this? It's like, it was tiny, right? Coming from yeah. California. The first time I went to a Del Mar gun show, it was in two buildings. And they had like this sliding glass door. Um, and then you walk across and it was enormous. But even yeah. when I came home from prison and I went to, I, I'm like, I remember talking to my probation officer. I'm like, can I go to the gun show? He's like, yeah, just don't bring any guns home. I'm like, can I go to a gun store? He's like, yeah, you just can't buy one. I'm like, so you don't have a problem. I can, he's like, no, I don't, you just can't, don't buy one. But when we, when I went to the gun show, when I came home, I didn't have any of my stuff. I had nothing. Right. So I went in there, met this dude and he was selling like, I don't know. It looks like, I don't even remember the name of the company. It's gear. It's off, it's offshore gear. Right. right. So I bought like a little camelback and some bullshit and he, he loved me. Like I was buying all kinds of shit just so I had stuff when right. I go out hiking and shit. And, uh, <clears throat> he's like, Hey, I'll wholesale this to you. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to start building some stuff again. And, uh, but even then it, 18 years ago, almost 15, 18 years ago, that gun show was tiny. It was nothing like anything we'd ever seen. Yeah. So Pomona hadn't, was no longer in existence. Right. It Pomona doesn't was, exist. Pomona was dead. And I would, I would say that as grand as that was, we will never see anything like that. I mean, that. I guess they couldn't do it in California now. Yeah, they couldn't do it in California. But I guess, uh, I guess Pomona was. I would, I would say that Pomona was uh, kind of at the same scale as the old Soldier of Fortune shows. Yes, and even the Soldier of Fortune shows, the last ones we did were smaller. Yeah, like we're the smaller, first yeah. Soldier of Fortune I walked into, it was big, and I like when I walked in, the first thing you saw right front and center was a giant eagle booth like red carpet and i i walked in there and it's like angels ah, it's just so like i like i get goosebumps thinking about it and i i walked in and john carver walked over and he said can i help you young man and that's and he stood and talked to me for two hours and that really probably is part of what put me on the path that that set me on i was already building gear and stuff but to be able to talk to a dude who was like the peak of the industry right and then to be able to become friends with him, and when he'd come to town, we'd have lunch and stuff. Um, we sold Eagle backpack. I'm like, John, I'm never going to build day packs. Let me buy your day packs. And that's why we sold Eagle backpacks. We were a wholesale. He set up an account, and we sold those and rifle cases and stuff. But the Soldier Fortune show, like the last one we went to, there was no red carpet. It wasn't. It it just. I like, think there were. I think that was at the point where Soldier Fortune was dead, and they were transitioning to uh, a more industry. Yeah. The, what what is it? What is it? Everybody it, it, goes it went to, to Arizona. The Saw Show. The um, no. What is it? Everybody goes to Small Arms Review. No, now in January, Shot uh, Show. Shot Show. That Shot Show was that it was becoming an industry thing versus a kind of, I don't know, hangout where you could shoot bullets in the pool and throw flashbangs in your hotel room. I, you know, you say that people have no idea. Like they don't have a fucking clue when it came out that you could uh, fire a Glock pistol underwater. And they were saying you have to change out the firing pin cups or whatever. Um, but at the Sands hotel, I don't think the Sands hotels even it's gone. I they think it's it. gone. Yeah. When the morning out, it was, it was an enormous fucking party at the soldier of fortune show. Uh, Dwayne took a window out and was repelling out of the window and flash banged a dude's room two day two doors down like the SWAT, the SWAT team came it was a fucking it was a big and this was That's like just, this was a, a common occurrence but they said they pulled thousands of rounds of thousands of bullets from people firing their pistols in the Sands Hotel swimming pool and like there has that, to be a there there has to be a point though I think there has to be a point that the Sands Hotel was okay with it. Yeah, you would have to be because because you would think that they could have really just hoovered up all those bullets. Well, I guess if you hadn't committed a crime, I was just thinking that you're you're and run you're basically yeah on you're them. basically giving them all your data on your handgun. So if you ever use it in a real thing, they already have your 
your fucking bullet. It was a different time, man. Yeah, it was a different we time. To, we used to pull into valet and unload 20 rifle cases and put them on the bellhop thing and just take them upstairs. Like, nobody gave a shit. Nope. Uh-huh. Was Nobody even looked fucking twice. I mean, pre... Uh, 9-11. You know, people like the like the example, the, the shooter in Vegas, and everybody talking about how did he get all that stuff up in his room and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, you know, pre the incident, no, nobody cared. Like, you know, we were going up to, every year we were going up to Dave Locke's place in Wyoming. Yep. So for SOTG, we would take MP5s, M4 carbines, sniper rifles, and, you know, fuck, we had, I think one time we had 10,000 rounds of 45 and 9 millimeter, and then a ton of 308. So we had three carts that were just guns and ammo, and the way we would, the way we would work that trip out is we would uh, we'd do the soft day first. So we would leave Camp Pendleton, hit Vegas, do a night in Vegas, and then hard hard sell all the way up to Wyoming in order to you know be able to have that night in Vegas. I mean, we were toting carts with ammo cans, green U.S. military ammo cans, straight up to our rooms and back down through the lobbies. Nobody ever even blinked an eye at it. Nobody like it never, nobody cared. They just didn't care because it was, I don't want to say it was commonplace, but I mean, you would, if you had an opportunity to look up how much ammunition is fired in Vegas every year, you would shit yourself. It makes the department of defense look like a, you know, like a boy scout group. One, one store, one small store that I went to with Billy, I went with Billy and it was, it was a, probably had like six lanes you know, they have a ton of machine guns, uh, and he, we go in there, and they took us downstairs and showed us how they collect all the brass and all that shit, and I thought it was pretty cool how they did that. But uh, I'm standing next to this uh, tri-wall cardboard container, you know, big as a pallet. Well, it was probably three feet high, just completely filled with brass. And in my head, I was thinking, God damn, that is a lot of ammo. And uh, he, he, I go, how much ammo does the store go through in a year? And he says, well, we budget for $10 million in ammo at this location. So, I mean, you're talking hundreds of millions of rounds that are getting fired every year. Like, I guarantee you, more ammunition goes into Las Vegas every year than the Marine Corps buys easily. That was a, that was a decade ago, at least. Yeah, that, that, yeah again, that was, that was 10 years ago. And there's more machine gun places in Vegas now than there ever was. Yeah. So if you're talking small arms ammunition, that I guarantee you that the DOD doesn't hold a, a candle to what Vegas is, is shooting out every year. So when you, when you have all that going on in your town, it's kind of hard to be like, hey, what is that an ammo can? What, what's in the ammo can? Now, after... The shooting. Um, I did go to Vegas, and I did go to Vegas to support the uh, the Veterans Day parade with Billy, and help out however I could. They have a they had a I can't think of the name of it. I'm sorry, Vegas, but they built an outdoor range to try and get people to stop shooting in the desert. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a nice range. Yeah, it's a nice range. No headache. Yeah, uh, pretty. It's, it's a good range, and uh, the county built it. And so I joined that range, and every time I was in town, I would go, I, I would go spend a day out there just shooting the shooting the long guns, because they had, uh, I think it went out to six hundred. They were trying to they they were at the time they were trying to make a thousand yard range, but it wasn't done when I was out there. It might be done now. Uh, and so I would go, and then the, I think it was, I think it was the year after the shooting that stuff happened in Vegas, and I was going, and Billy's like, hey you're okay. He goes, just make sure that you're not cruising through the hotel with a bunch of uh, long gun cases because they don't allow you to take them up to the rooms anymore. You have to check them at the, you have to check them at their little security thing and then they hold them downstairs and then you got to ask. And so I'm like, man, there's a lot of videos out there of dudes having issue with checking their guns and coming yeah. back and the guns not being there. Even yeah. Where it's supposed checked. to be. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, are they specifically looking? He goes, no, they're not specifically looking. But if obviously, if you go through the the hotel lobby with a long gun case, they're gonna they're gonna spot you out. So I would just basically go get a cart, put my cases on the bottom of the cart, cover those with 
bags and yeah. shit, hang my fucking clothes on the thing, and then push that up there, and I never had a problem with it. But again, I'm hope I'm not giving anybody ideas. So when you were. When we all went to uh, Dave Locke's place, yeah, for the sniper competition, was that the first time you'd been, or had you already did you already know him? Me, you, Travis, we was ran it, into crazy. First we time? ran into crazy Phil Seaberger in his RV. That would have been the second time with the dog. Yeah, that would have been the second time. And then the Colonel was there when we walked into the fucking cabin. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Colonel Cooper. Colonel was, Cooper was, was there. there. Yeah. yeah, that was fucking yeah, cool. That would have been the second time when when Seaburger was. <laughs> it's it's so funny. Seaburger fucked. So, the there was a competition in Wyoming. People was, have no idea who Seaburger is either. I'll bet you. I'll bet you nobody listening. Yeah, nobody knows nobody knows who Phil Seaburger is. But he was the he was the Grand Poobah of suppressors at one time. Those became the Surefire suppressors. Yeah. They fucking Surefire brought him in to build suppressors and. Uh, it, that competition in Wyoming started to get popular, and so the army, <laughs> the army AMU team, they sent guys to compete in in Dave Locke's sniper competition, and it was a, it was pretty good. I liked the way he had it set up. There was, you know, there was some stupid shit that we were doing, but it still was pretty good because you had to, like, I think the whole course was eight miles, and you had to move between stations. No, it was eight miles the first day you moved because you forgot your sand sock. You oh, took, and I had to take my sock off. You took off, your yeah. sock off, and you did all that movement with no sock on. Yeah. Anyways, it it was a it's, it was pretty good. It was set up pretty good, and and the Army AMU team came out, and they had, I want to say they had eight shooters, and this was the first time through. And Seaburger was there, and Phil was talking. He was talking suppressors, but then he started talking barrel harmonics, and everybody's listening to him. Like we're all around the campfire this is the day before the competition we're all around the campfire and shit and and everybody's talking they're talking and the and the you know the the army amu guys if you don't know this that's all they do they don't do army shit they do long-range shooting shit so they know their guns like they're they are they're premier shooters and uh phil's he's doing this whole campfire and then he's he starts talking about lapping barrels He's like, yeah, if you lap your barrel, you know, you're going to get, it's going to group so much better. And he's, he's, he's pulling out charts and shit and he's doing all this stuff. And the army guys are like, they're, they're all in, they're all in. And, and I was kind of sweating the army guys. Like I, I really was sweating the AMU guys. Cause they're again, they're premier shooters. Right. And here I am with a fucking, you know, an M 40 a one with special ball and, they got they, they've got their van, they got their full support bus with every, all, everything's brand new and shit and and so I'm like I'm kind of sweating them and Phil I don't know how he did it but he talked them into lapping their barrels and uh, and so they're all doing it. they're all they're, he's got his shit, whatever compound he was doing all this shit and they're all like yeah this is the best this is the greatest and uh, and he Phil asked me he's like do you want me to do your gun. And I'm like, I go, I go, you know, I know where I'm hitting. I, I don't want to mess that up because that's what it changed all their dope. Yeah. I go, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I know where I'm hitting. I don't want to mess that up. I, I'm just, you know, the voodoo. I used to always say it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like 90, it's like 89% uh, mathematical. And then there's a certain percentage of voodoo that is involved in long range shooting. And, and so I'm like, I need to keep, I just need to keep it the way it is. Right, you need to keep it the way it is, and so yeah, first day, like they shot like shit the first day because they had lapped their barrels and it changed all their dope and they shot like shit, which gave me and man, I can't think who my shooter was. It wasn't Travis. I don't think it was Travis that first time. It might have been Travis, but it gave us the advantage all the way through because they had to make up points, so we were able to. Uh, so when Sneak we by him. when we rolled into town, there was a dude just hanging out there, and we're like, "Who's this kid?" And the kid had just come back from summoning. Everest. Oh, fucking summoning Everest! Yeah. So seventeen years old. He'd been there at DNL for like a month, and I'm like, "What are you doing out here?" He's like, "I'm just acclimating to the terrain," because they were gaming it. You know, yeah. that, well, he was he was Dave's shooter protege. Yeah. yeah he was, his 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 gun had a golf cart with it. Like it had a, a literally a fuck. They had these wheels and shit to well, tow all a, this shit around. It had a carrying handle on it that was that long. Yeah. And the gun, I I want to say that the gun itself, thirties, I thought, weighed thirty pounds. So do you remember uh, Benny Cooley was there with his partner? 
um, Mick Utterbuck, I think, was there. Um, those dudes, I don't know if you ever knew that or not, those guys uh, were winners of the Eco Challenge. So they were doing, like, Eco Challenge, Rage Gawa. They were doing all these extreme races. And that's, Oh, yeah, he had the truck. Yeah, that's why they were yeah, running. He had, that, like, he had that badass truck there that I was all infatuated yeah, with. Yeah, those dudes would, like... Yeah. They 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 might not have even been shooters. They just were there before yeah. everybody else. Yeah, they were there just egoing it up. Yeah, I think they I think they did. Shoot. They won. I think they did shoot. Yeah, yeah, they shot. But yeah. I mean, they'd be there fucking thirty minutes before anybody got to the next stage. Yeah, um, they were sponsored by I don't. They had a big rifle company behind them. Um, but it was it was fun, man. Gillette, Wyoming. Yeah. There's nothing to do there. There was one movie theater there. Yeah. Remember, we found the I found a salamander somewhere. Remember, I had those two oh, salamanders yeah, yeah. in the sink. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely nothing to do. I mean, I'm sure it's different now because Surefire ended up buying uh, the property. Surefire bought it. But then when I asked Travis about it a while ago, I think they sold it again and maybe Dave Locks got it back again or I I, I don't know. Dave Locks was like, hey, we have an airport. I've got these empty buildings. Why don't you move special operations equipment yeah. out here? He's showing us. Man, to get to Dave's place, it's like a 20-minute drive down a gravel road. And then all the neighbors are pissed because there's fucking dust coming out. Like there's a ten mile an hour speed limit on this fucking road. I mean, it was a he he did have an awesome setup as far as being able to just shoot uh, long distances, long distances in open in an open environment. There were uh, pr uh, there were pronghorns everywhere. Yeah, the pronghorns everywhere. Remember getting out and I was going to try to get on that cow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cows there's flies all over them and it looks like you can just walk up and get on a cow but when you're next to that cow that cow is not going to let you get on it no. and when there's a bunch of them they crush you between them yeah they don't want nothing to do with you uh yeah that was a that was a good i really like going to that competition because it was it was a legit competition uh you were competing against you know people from all different like the guy that the first one i went to the dude that was a he was a just a African hunter. <laughs> That's all he did was African hunts. And you know, me and Travis show up to station number one and cause it's a sniper competition. So we got all our kit that we would normally take on rucks, everything fucking painted our faces and shit. <laughs> we did the whole nine yards. We get to the first station and he's there and he's got his, I don't know what kind of rifle it was. Some, something you would take to Africa. He's got a, he's wearing shorts. Like South African, yeah, like, like South African SAS shorts. Type stuff. Got his tennis shoes on. He's got a placard with four rounds on it. He's got a placard with four rounds on his belt. He's got his rifle over his shoulder. He's got a big sun hat on, and a a folding camp chair. <laughs> and he's literally sitting on the camp chair. And me and Travis show up to the we show up to the station, and he's like looks at us and goes, "Um, you guys have never done this before, have you?" <laughs> We're like, "Nope." He goes gets the chair and he's like, this is the most valuable piece of equipment you're going to need for this. And then he sits on the chair and me and Travis are like, shit. <laughs> it reminds me of the movie Hidalgo. Everybody's yeah. doing the horse race, but they're all fucking com complete different places. Let me see what that backup alarm is real quick. All Pause right. it. What episode is this? What episode is this? What? Two? 32. Did you say two? 32? No, it's not. It's 35. It's... Come on. Shut hey. the fuck up. What episode is this is really? 32? 15. It's fucking 15. 35. It can't be 35. It better be fucking 35. It can't be 35. I think we're still in the 20s. The 20s? Yeah, like 28. What's up with that? What's we up with that nasty ass ugly micro rig right there? What are you talking about? That is that's Superman color right there. What is it? Why is it here? Cuz you're going to put a placard on the back of it. Oh, okay. You're going to put a placard on the back Shit, of it. Shit, so I'm glad you brought that in cuz I couldn't remember what the third one. I have tiger stripe inside. You do? Yeah. Hey, when you do the tiger stripe? Yep. Whatever you want. So we're going to do chest rig, right? Yep. I, we're doing those. We're doing uh, stacked micros. Isn't that what you wanted? No, I want the other ones to just be chest rigs. Or, uh, you know, your... Uh, no. God damn it. You said you wanted to hold four mags. The cop rig. What's the one that has the medical pouch on here, but it's got just air mags? The, the stacked micro. Stack micro. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, stack micro. So why aren't you running a stack micro? Well, because I already had this, and we're you know we're on a time crunch. What's the time crunch? The end of next month, which is a I'm time crunch. These, for I'm SRA. gonna have these motherfuckers the end of this week. But you don't have. You said you didn't have any Marpat. What if I got some? Well, then I then make it all the same. I don't care. 
But when you do the tiger stripe, because you said this, make it sideways. No, 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 no. Because you said you said that not a lot of tiger stripes going to show on the on the outside pockets. Can you make those slick? The outside pockets make them slick. Oh, no, you're going to see tiger stripe. Okay. Well, you just mentioned that you we'll look at them when we go in. Okay. We'll look at them when we go in. Um, what thirty four? What's thirty four? Thirty four. No, there's no it's way it's only 34. Was last week. Come on, that's oh, not you know 34. What? You know what? Because we recorded last week, but Jeff wasn't here, so that doesn't even count as 34. This is 34. What did you record? Just None us. Your business. Talking about... Okay, because I'm not going to watch it, Are you? especially since I'm not in it. Are you aware it. that they evacuated um, Yellowstone Park? Oh, I know. I missed it. Is it because the, the, it's gonna, the park's going to blow up? Yes. They've been talking about that for a while, though. Yeah, but apparently they actually evacuated people. Tucker Carlson was talking about it. I mean, it. here's the weird thing. There's a 100-foot-long fracture. Yeah. And, yes, through and, the park. Yeah, and they said that that makes it five times more likely yes. to explode. Here's here's the problem. This is the problem. I know it sounds cute that, that they evacuated Yellowstone Park, but if... If what happens, ha- if the thing that happens that they think is going to happen. We're all fucked. Evacuating Yellowstone Park isn't doing you any good. <laughs> like, where are you going? Unless you are unless you leave Yellowstone Park and drive all the way to Tennessee, you're fucked. <laughs> well, the, I think it's they're, they're worried about the real... Have you not seen all the volcano movies and shit? Where, yeah. Where the, the one crazy dude's like, it's going to blow. And they're like, you've said that 400 times. We're not closing the yeah, park. We're not closing the and park. And then the mountain biker goes through the cloud of gas and dies, and the skier dies, yeah. and that's what they're worried about. Um, but I just I that's what we discussed was just super volcanoes, my limited knowledge on super volcanoes. I mean, it's too bad because uh, the, the park is pretty awesome, but... I am pretty up to up to speed on volcanoes, though. I did live through um, Mount St. Helens. I I also lived through Mount St. Helens. Can you believe that? And I went. You went to Mount St. Helens. I went to Mount St. Helens. Do you have a jar of ashes? I've a, I do have a jar of ash, and you're not going to believe this because you just reminded me. I also have a picture of fucking Bigfoot. Hundred percent at Mount St. Helens. When I went to Mount St. Helens, or was when he was at your house the other day? No, no, at Mount St. Helens. When I went to Mount St. Helens and did the tour and saw all the damage, I was able to get a picture of Bigfoot. So I'll the, have to bring it in so you guys can see The lake up top there has actually got an immense amount of fish. It's it's completely rehab, rehabilitated, and, like, there's there's all kinds of good, oh, good nature shit going on. You can't – okay, you can't stop – Nature. Nature. We're, we're, a, we're a flea on a dog's back. You can't stop nature. The nature will always – survive whatever it is. i mean you if, if you you think about the dinosaurs right and you think about an asteroid destroying everything on the planet it didn't because we're here and all the foliage is here nature will always find a way like they hear, always uh, find a way they were putting a freeway in somewhere in san diego county and they found a woolly mammoth woolly mammoth yes and the woolly mammoth sets back everything yes. they have fucking been saying about when human beings because actually we're here. Yeah. yeah there's a there's actually there is actually a dig in Canada right now. I cannot think of the, the dig, but it predates all of our facts about Africa. So when, when they talk about, you know, that, that being where human beings came from, this dig in Canada predates that. So You want me to tell you where they came from? Where they, where they come from? Well, there's a Stargate there. Could be. There's actually a lot. There's a ton of Stargates. <laughs> Could be, but I'm just saying You know why you don't that, ever see Bigfoot? Because he goes through the Stargate? That's right. So you're saying that people in the future are hairy? It could be opposite of what we know, right? When you think about when you think about alien abductions, they always maybe, talk about like a completely maybe naked... Maybe Bigfoot was the first indigenous human-type animal here. Okay. And then he saw somebody come through the Stargate and learn how to use the Stargate. And he just uses it to what? Hide from... Us. People trying to find him in the woods. Are you aware? Are you are you up to speed on um, the Grand Canyon? The, uh, that there's a a civilization in the wall of the Grand Canyon that the government keeps everybody from finding that one. That one, but they just so apparently they they have found this was just on Rogan, and they looked it up, and apparently there's something to it. They've always said there's a bunch of Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon. And this dude brought it up. Hotep Jesus brought it up. 
and uh, Grant, and they looked it up. And in fact, this is this is all relatively within like this year, I believe this has happened. Um, a bunch of groups have come out and said, yes, there's these huge caverns. Yes, there's enormous tunnel systems full of Egyptian artifacts and hieroglyphs all through the walls, just like in Egypt. We had the same thing here in Tennessee. Yes. And then they... The Smithsonian came and took it all? No, the Smithsonian didn't come and take it all. Then they uh, dammed the river and flooded it out. Oh, is that why Is that why we made the Tennessee Lake here? I don't think it's Tennessee Lake. I think it's one of the other... Uh, it was done in, I believe it was 33 when they made the discovery that they found a pyramid structure. So there's, there's a lot all, of pyramids there's, here. Yeah, there's all these articles about they found a pyramid structure. I mean, you can look it up. That The Smithsonian, I don't know, it wasn't called the Smithsonian back then, I don't think. They sent teams, archaeologists, out, and they were finding Egyptian hieroglyph stuff. And the only reason why they found it is because they were getting ready to dam this river. And so they, they postponed the damming of the river for a certain period of time while these archaeologists mapped everything out and then they damned the river. And you can, you can look that up. It's, it's a, uh, you know, news from 1933. There's yeah. Then if you ever, <laughs> if you ever get old newspapers, um, encyclopedias, like look up old encyclopedias, look through those. If you ever get the chance, because there's a ton of stuff in there on giants and Nephilim and all kinds of stuff. I just learned something pretty interesting out of the encyclopedia encyclopedia that, uh, from the Bible, that's weird. That everybody was, everybody uh, like makes a statement about how the Bible's not real because it mentions unicorns, right? And so, if you look it up now, if you if you look it up now, it'll say a unicorn is a mythical creature, blah 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 blah. This horse mythical creature. But if you look in old encyclopedias, when they talk about a unicorn, they are not talking about a horse. They are talking about a rhinoceros. And even today, if you look up the uh, scientific name of a, a rhinoceros, it's unicorn. <laughs> there's, Latin, Latin Yeah, there's a, there's a unicorn. There's unicorn one horn, unicorn two horn. Hmm. And so it's kind of weird that uh, how they just manipulate things to what say What were you doing thing. recently when you f- found this information? How did, like, <laughs> what were you doing? That oh, I was just, were, you know, I'm just surfing around. On Facebook? Surfing around. On yeah. TikTok? On the TikToks. Do you yeah. do a lot of TikToking? I do a lot of TikToking. My page is pretty big. You're like TikToking? It's, it's huge. Your other page is pretty big, too. You probably haven't even seen it. Have I haven't you? seen the other page, but my TikTok <laughs> page is, is good. This motherfucker, he's on a TikTok page four times a day and probably never even looked ne- at it. Never even seen it. Uh, I don't fuck. see it unless it comes up in my feed. I wish they'd send some money for it. Fucking thing. Um, your wife. Okay. I don't know what her schedule nowadays looks like. Looks like does she have room for more on her schedule? Probably not, but it just would depend. Okay, listen, you listen. I'm listening. Snackle box. What's a snackle box? What could it be? I think it's a uh, a fishing box that you put snacks in. It's a, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. A snackle box. Okay, charcuterie boards. Charcuterie boards. Okay. Do you like a nice charcuterie board? Yes. Somebody already makes snackle boxes, though. Shut up. Yeah. There's already a company that makes charcuterie Look, boards that you put in a tackle box. No, they don't. Yes, they do. I thought of this this morning. I well, just yeah, made this I, up. I, th- I think you and somebody... Look has, it up. Somebody has already thought of a charcuterie no, board... It's not real. ...that is in a tackle box. That's some some guy's mom put some Lunchables in that motherfucker. I'm just saying. It's 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 already been done. Is it snackleboxcom it's probably not going to be snacklebox.com. Pull up snacklebox.com cuz we're buying that motherfucker. When's this coming out? Next Wednesday? It'll come out Monday. Don't let me forget to buy those. <laughs> so, there's a I don't know how I found it. I we were in Jackson doing something and I think it just targeted marketed me on Facebook, right? And it's charcuterie board and it's this lady that makes charcuterie boards. So I hit her up. I'm like I'm kind of hungry. I want, I would love to have some fancy Lunchables. So I try to get a hold of her and I can't, she gets it back to me Monday. So I found her again last, I'd forgotten all about this. And then Wrangler star just did a, a video short and his wife made him this fucking awesome charcuterie board spread. And it's got all kinds of fruits on it and meats and snacks and cheese and chips and stuff and little crackers. And he's like, this is so unmanly. 
I would never eat this. What <laughs> say, what say you guys? And everybody's like, oh my God, your wife made that? I would love to have a woman that would make that for me. And <laughs> just going on and on and on. Thousands of comments on this shit. So somebody, he did a video, this was weeks ago on the charcuterie board, maybe last week. And then he did a video yesterday of the FUPA. And he's like, my beloved, is, is it okay for a man to wear a purse? Well, it is if it's an SOE FUPA. I wear this every day. So 900 comments on this thing this morning. And it's, uh, dudes are like, oh, where's your lipstick? How come you don't? And the b- number one comment is how come there's no tourniquet? Like they're just losing their <laughs> shit. I'm like, what makes you think he doesn't have it in his pocket? Or, you know, so and somebody in there, the best comment I saw was, uh, oh, you won't. You won't eat the charcuterie that your wife made you, but you'll wear a purse. And he, he commented, he's like, my, my hypocrisy has no limit. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought it was awesome. So that made me remember that there's this charcuterie board place. And I looked, and she now has a website. And she does, she'll do a, a board spread. She does weddings. She'll do events. And she'll bring and feed, you know, 50 people or 20. And she does it in a box also. So Amanda's like, oh, you need snackle boxes. And I don't know why, but I thought, Gina, I don't know why that came to m- into my head, but I mean that does sound like a uh, that does sound like a project she would get behind the, sn- the snackle boxes because she did so awesome. Like when we were doing the parties, doing the event planning shit. Like when we had the Halloween party, I still have those scarecrows she made. Like the the fucking we had these three scarecrows out here that were the coolest looking. We would go, we always go to Walmart and we buy all of their pumpkins. All of them, mm-hmm. 200, 300 pumpkins, whatever they got. They never have enough. We got them. And we use them before Halloween, and then we'll just, like, give them away. You can come get free pumpkins. But she made these scarecrows and, like, decorated. It was just badass. It was awesome. When It was a little out of control. Like, everybody coming in is like, hey, um, all those hay bales out there on the driveway are on fire. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we lit them on fire. Like you, it was, it was a little too much. Like it was cause we're in a bowl here. So, so it was smoke. The whole fucking yeah. place would just be, were you here when we did that party? Just be hmm. smoke. Were you here for the flamethrower? No, he wasn't here for the flamethrower. Cause then I'd have, I'd have a fucking badass video of me firing that flamethrower off. We have some drone footage of you. Christian. Yeah, Green's I know. It's, good it's, drone footage. But it's, it, it's not Brandall. Like it, it's not Brandall. That was the first time I'd ever seen a drone when Christian had that. Yeah, thing Christian out here. had that. It was the was it the parrot? No, it's the um the, like four, a, the Phantom Four. We have one, one in there. No, it was a big one. It was a big one he had out here. Hmm. I just re- was it it was red though, right? No, or it was white t- with red stripes. Hmm. I don't know. Somebody it. else had a little one here. At That's that what time. I, I think I remember the little red one. Now guys do nowadays guys say flamethrower, and I think people don't even realize that there is a actual military flamethrower. Like people, cause we had like those XM 15s or whatever. I bought three of them. Yeah. The company was super good to deal with cinema. We gave them all away and, and listener giveaway stuff. Um, have you seen the, what? Have you seen the one they have now that goes on the bottom of the AR 15? I, I saw who's the crazy black security guy that's I always doing all the viral videos. Yeah, I can't videos. see it, but he's got, he's got flamethrower yeah. on his shit. <laughs> so we had the XM 15s and they're, you're, you're, they're neat. For about five minutes, you got to mix up the fuel. They don't. They don't last long you, enough. They burn. You can trigger them for thirty seconds. They're super fucking hot. Like you're too close to it. Yeah. It needs a stock or something on it. Um, but the the military one. Do you think guy did guys get like fucked up shooting those things? As far as what the real ones, like burnt? the one you shot. Yeah. Did they ever explode or anything go wrong? Well, they would, they they could explode. They were a they were a. a they were a primary target for for the enemy as far as shooting at the tanks, but again, you're running tanks on your back and you're running forward. So, I mean, yeah, if you got fucked up, you got fucked up. But that's that's kind of any weapon system. That was a Vietnam or a World War World, II. World War Two. A real World War Two flame. Who had? Well, the ones we had was a we. The one we shot was a, I believe it was an M7, and that was a Vietnam. That would have been more of a, uh, World War Two upgraded Vietnam style flame. So. Power. We found a dude that was an actual flamethrower veteran, right? We talked to a dude, and he's like, yeah, you got to use these cellulose seals. And, like, I don't know where they dug this guy up from. I didn't I didn't ever get to meet him. But there was – people were a little concerned yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, people were a little concerned that we were going to blow ourselves up. Unfortunately, nobody got blown up. Yep. But it's a it's a legit. I mean, you went and put a uniform on and everything. Oh yeah, I had to. I had to get my Robert De Niro on. I had to get my Deer Hunter on. Did you have those tiger stripes or did you go? No, I had them. them. You I had just them. had them. Had them from the day. I don't throw nothing away. I'm a hoarder. How do you know where everything is? I just know where it is, and I just search it out, and 
I usually have a kind but of you can't idea. like go to it. It takes a couple hours. Yeah, usually. I got to search. It, like it's it was like the it was like uh, when you told me to get a two quart canteen. Oh, fuck in the Marine Corps, I hadn't used a two quart tank canteen in ten years, so I knew I had them, and I knew I had fifteen of them. I just couldn't place where it was. And so it it took me so when three I told you to bring to find it. when I told you to bring two quarts in I ordered them that day they got here yesterday <laughs> well I mean, I've got a box of one quarts in there yeah we've I've got a dozen or so two quart canteen covers we've built them all there's not any interest in them like dudes were asking about them that's why I'm like hey we haven't built these in a while let's go ahead and build them I don't think we're gonna produce them uh, uh, here's the thing uh, the canteen as you and I know it is dead mm-hmm. Where now, would the, you use it? The Where would you use it? You currently. Like when what situ is there a situation where you would use a canteen anymore? Well, I'm I'm kind of transitioning back to canteens. I think that if I think I'm kind of transitioning are. back because the 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 I mean sorry, camelback. You were a jewel in the Nile, but the, you're the bushcraft guys don't use camelbacks. Yeah, it, it, it's just not it's not as durable as they they think they are, and it's a pain in the ass. It really is a pain in the ass to put water in them because you got to take it off and whatever it's mounted to. And uh, and they, there's a company that just – because the convenience of the two-quart canteen has always been the straw system, right? It's always been being able to have that hose that's right here so I can just suck water out of that two-quart – or out of the uh, – For the gas mask thing? Oh, out the of the camelback. Camelback, right? Out of the camelback, sorry. Um, that is what kind of killed – the two quart, right? Because why would you carry two quarts when I can have a camel back on my back? But again, the military is transitioning from a, uh, a foot soldier infantry to a mobilized infantry. And so you're always sitting in a vehicle and anything on your back, is just, you're, you're fucking killing your camel back every time you get in a vehicle. So water has to go somewhere else. And there's a company that now makes a canteen lid that your camelback straw will hook up to so you can suck water from anywhere you want and now you're using regular canteens. Uh, so I think the convenience of the camelback was really the straw. And if you can if you can have a two-quart canteen here with a straw on it anyways, the two-quart canteen is much more convenient to fill and collapse down to nothing and throw it in your ruck when it's empty and shit like that. So you left, <clears throat> you left that two-quart here. I filled it with water. And it leaked. And it leaks. Yeah, you really got to crank that lid down so that it doesn't leak. It, I don't remember lid, that being like that. That lid, that the lid that is on that two quart is not a legit lid. So if you take a look at your one quart that you got, and then you look at the two quart lid, the two quart lid is not a legit lid. You really need the lid off the one quart on your two quart. Why did you? Where did the lid on that one come from? I, it was probably just uh, something I had. So when you said you can't have this one because it's got my gas mask attachment, I ordered you a bunch of gas mask attachment it, lids. No, that, that lid was not the gas mask attachment. That was the the lid Correct. that I could put the hose attachment. But you wouldn't in. leave the other one because you said yeah. you need it, so I ordered you more lids. They okay. are also not here. Well, they're going to take time because nobody... Uh, I would think that Amazon Prime, they're sitting somewhere in an Amazon warehouse. No, not not canteen lids. That's yeah, if be, it's on Prime, that's they no, have to have possession of I it. I think that's a lie. I think that I think that they probably put it on there and they're like, "Fuck, nobody orders these things." There's a we bunch can, of people from China. There's a bunch of people who are like, "Hey, do you see this giant Amazon fulfillment center?" And they go in there. And they're like, "Do you see? There's nobody here. Like, there's ton. There's the, all these videos coming out of people on on TikTok and shit. And they're like, "Look at this place. Look at all these cars." There's no fucking people in any of these places. The cars are there? They're they're just empty cars, like they're warehousing cars. Oh, oh, like, gotcha. Okay, I like thought you meant... they're using the parking lot just to store cars. Well, our... So when you're driving past on the freeway, it has the appearance that it's this big fucking, you know, all these employees are here. And the signage on it says Amazon. There's nothing, there's nobody there. They're going, the buildings are empty. Well, the, the globalists are running into a manpower issue mm -hmm. and... The they probably shouldn't have uh, murdered all those people in the last couple of years. Well, the the global economy, the the global economy is in its death throes. Yes. So we are. When you think about uh, Made in America, Made in America is going to happen again, 
it has to happen again because the global economy is non supportable anymore because there's not enough people. And like when people talk about like, I just, did you know that Brexit or not, not Brexit. It's like the LGDB. No, the, the block, uh, the Russian China. Yeah. What do they call it? Bricks. Bricks. Well, but it's, it's bricks plus 20 more now. Yeah. But did you know that we invented bricks? I did not know that. Yes, Who's, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs 10 years ago invented bricks. The whole concept of bricks actually tried to patent the word or you know, uh, what do you call it? Not patent. Trademark the word bricks. Uh, because Goldman Sachs had already predicted that Europe that Europe the European Union is going to drown itself in uh, unskilled labor and that market is no longer going to be a premier market and so they created BRICS in order to align all these other countries that are going to be the top earners in the future. It's not... Uh, Their plan is not for the U.S. to be in there, though. Yeah, well, here's, the, here's the issue. The issue is this, and this is the thing that most people don't understand, is the only reason why there's global trade, the only reason why you can get a an olive from Paraguay or a fucking, uh, an ink pen from Israel. The only reason why there's only one reason because at the end of world war two, we created a pact with the entire world for free trade. Not so we would benefit from free trade. So they would benefit from free trade. And part of that pact was we will use the United States Navy to ensure that all waterways are free for trade. So you can get goods anywhere in the world. And that's at the same time that, that uh, the UK, England, and all that decided they were not going to be the superpower anymore. They were going to step down and let the United States be the controller. Of be the controller. And, and it's the U.S. Navy that actually is doing that. And, uh, and the reason why we did it was because, of, uh, obviously... Um, we knew that the cold war was going to happen with the Soviet union. Well, because we planned it. Well, we, here's the issue. We orchestrated it. The issue is we did not have the capability. We did not have the capability to fight Russia. We didn't have the lift capability to fight Russia at the time. And so when I say that we created a trade union with the, uh, you know, the European partners like Germany and what we did was we wrote those, we wrote those agreements so that they would have to fight the Russians if the Russians came first uh, or if the Russians did attack and we guaranteed free trade. And that's how that all happened. Now, the only reason why I'm bringing this up is um, because people don't understand how global trade really exists and who is really responsible for global trade. They also don't understand that once the U S retracts, so once we retract in the United States and become isolationist, meaning the seventh fleet stays in the, in the near Pacific, meaning around Hawaii uh, and San Diego. And then there is no country, not even the Chinese that has the capability to guarantee shipping lanes. So that world trade is going to die. Yeah. Your piracy you're not going to get, yeah, you're gonna not going to get, you're not going to get coffee beans from Columbia anymore because without the United States Navy out there ensuring those, those shipping lanes, the wild, wild west that is the coast of Somalia will be the coast of everywhere because you'll be able to steal those goods off the high sea and not worry about repercussions because nobody else has the capability to project power around the world like the United States does. Well, while we say we should retract and, and be isolationist, the, pe the powers that be, the, the people that control the purse strings and pull those strings of the puppet are never going to allow that to happen because they constantly have to amass more well, and they, grow. And they're not interested in seeing the United States rise back up. They are interested in the one world government because then they can steal the, money from everywhere. The problem with and they the, need to keep us in fear of all those boogeymen. Like, like everybody thinks China is, is this big, huge thing. And maybe it is. But your government's the one telling you that. But the problem is those people that are that are pulling those purse strings are the, the like you know the Goldman Sachs of the world um, they are counting on something that they can't control they're counting on uh, our population our our population being stable at the baby boomer level and it's never going to be that way and we are retracting in population so what that means is even if goal even if the you know the the 
Goldman Sachs of the world are like, hey, we want to ensure that there is going to be world trade all over the planet. The U.S. Navy is not going to be able to project those vessels because they're not going to have the crews necessary to do it. We are going to have to retract solely because we cannot meet the we cannot meet the needs of the the U.S. We can't meet the needs of the Department of Defense as it is. In five more years, it's going to be even worse. You're not going to have. We're not going to have a. We may have ten carriers. Do you think you'll see drone ships? Uh, they're already working on it, but again. They're not going to have the same effect. They're not going to have the same effect as crewed ships. They're just not. It, they don't have the capability to be, to be as effective as a. You know, there is something to say about uh, aircraft carriers sitting off the coast of wherever the fuck, right? Because I can project an amount of power that I'm not going to be able to do with a a drone vessel to a certain extent. Not yet. In the future, maybe the entire U.S. Navy is all automatons and robots. But I'm also going to say that when we get to that level, our existence isn't going to matter anyways. Right? If if the if the US if the US Department of Defense can operate solely from inside a trailer in the Nevada desert without projecting any US footprints, boots on the ground, uh as a as a as a species we won't exist anyways. There's just no reason for us. So you said there's not going to be enough people to man all of those. Yeah, there's not. We, we may have a ten carrier navy, but there's no way that the the, the the navy's going to be able to put enough guys on those ships to crew them. There was a soundbite that came out. I don't remember who it was. A couple of weeks ago, last week, said uh, we need a war with a country with an ocean. And what it when it when they broke it all down, and what they were talking about is General Dynamics and all these companies. They don't make money from selling tanks and high Mars systems. They make their real money building aircraft carriers. And that's why we need a, a, another mass scale war with somebody with a Navy so that we can make all this money and Rosie, the riveter stands yeah. back up and we start building all these, you know, ships again. The problem is, uh, you know, like him or don't like him. Uh, Donald Trump exposed something very deep within the Western, uh, within the Western world is the United States has been getting, the United States has been guaranteeing security throughout the world for so long. We've guaranteed security for so long that countries have completely neglect they've completely ne- neglected their national defense to such a to such a extreme amount an extreme level that they are completely ineffective. So example, you know, example is the Ukraine war, right? We're trying to, we are trying to, through attrition, destroy the Russian army. The problem with that, the problem with that is all it's doing is showing the frailties of, of uh, NATO because NATO does not have the equipment, the ammunition, they don't have the support necessary for Ukraine to take this to the win. NATO doesn't have shit without the United States. NATO, and that's and that's the problem. And the United States doesn't need NATO. Well, I mean, we don't need NATO anymore, but from a existential threat, we were always using NATO to take over the world. Like if you listen to if you listen to those motherfuckers in the State Department right now, they're talking about bringing. Southeast Asia countries into NATO because it's a, it's a means of taking over the world. That's the whole point of it is, is being able to dictate to dictate to other governments what they can and they cannot do through means of of force and power. What's that? uh, What's that called when you start a, uh, you have a successful business and the mob comes in and they're like, Hey, you're going to give us 20% of your daily take (laughs) out of the register. What's that called? Uh, Extortion. Uh, Yeah. That's what the United States does. Well, we don't. Hit, that's the interesting thing, is we. It, it's crazy. We don't take twenty percent. We don't. We don't charge, and that's kind of why uh, we don't have to because the money that they're dealing in doesn't exist, right? So well, Elon Musk just changed the name. There's no more Twitter. It's called X now. Is it? Yeah. So hmm. he shut down Twitter, and it's now X. Everybody's up in arms over this, and they're like, "He just killed this thing. It's been alive for seventeen. Can you imagine? Twitter's been around seventeen years. So." 
he just killed this life form that's been around 17 years. And this new X, nobody's using it, really. Then why is there 7 billion users or whatever on it? Because those were, they just transferred over. Right. He's putting this currency in there. I don't remember what it's. It's You know, he started PayPal. Right. So there's going to be a banking aspect to it. It's going to be an everything app. Everything that you need to do is in Twitter there. And people are losing their shit over it because it's the other side, right? It's the, it's the liberals, right? So, and, and, and the, no, I'm not either one, you know, if there's some other dudes in there, but I heard an interesting thing. Like he doesn't actually have to have all that money. Like you get, so they are paying users. You register on this thing. Yeah. How do you register? You register with your fucking credit card. How do you have a credit card? Because you have a, a ID, right? So you register this and then as you use it, it pays you. The money doesn't exist until you spend it, right? It's just fucking make believe right, right, shit. Right, yes, There's no yes. securities to it, and that's that's that that's that whole thing with us going around. And while we don't take a twenty percent cut, we force them to trade in our well, dollars, the, our dollars that don't really fucking exist. Well, that is the that's the thing about Bitcoin. That is the and that's the thing that I've always tried to get people to pay attention to, is even you know when you think about Elon Musk thing with X. And he creates a currency and he's like, hey, this is how much it's worth. It's a pyramid scheme. All of it. Every bit of it is a pyramid scheme in the sense of what I need to do is I need to get a bunch of people on the bottom. to, or I need to get these people to come in and create this value. Create a value that doesn't really exist because it's not backed in anything real. It's just it's it's backed in the faith that I'm going to have in it that it's going to pay off in the long run. But the reality is, it's a pyramid scheme. It's like every any if any of you people that want universal health care, uh, pyramid scheme. Any of you people that want life insurance, it's a pyramid scheme. You have to have all these healthy people at the bottom in order to pay for the sick people at the top. Same thing with life insurance. You have to have all these young people at the bottom who are paying in to pay for the funerals at the top. You have to have a big base in order for it to make it real. And the more you the more you hype it to make it real, the more your initial investors can make and I think there's, basically steal. I think at this point there's more people around the world with faith in Bitcoin than the U.S. dollar. Again, the problem with that, though, is the problem with that though is as they learned with the as they learned with that guy that they just busted in uh, the Bahamas. Sam Can't Banks, think of his name. Banks. Yeah. As Bank as those free. all those people learned is it wasn't real. What those people do is they take your let your Dogecoin. Sorry, Elon, I don't want to bestray your currency, but they take when they take your Dogecoin and they go like this. Hey man. And Elon did this with Dogecoin, which is crazy. He's like, hey, this is worth nothing. You are going to make no money on this. This is just, I am just laughing at all the people who bought Bitcoin. And people started buying Dogecoin. They started buying this shit and they made it a currency because they started buying into something that he said wasn't real. What they do, and this is exactly what Bitcoin did, and if you, if any of you want to pay attention to the how it really works, is the people at the top... When you take all your money and you start putting it into Bitcoin, and I, I'm sorry, Bitcoin, I, it's any of these cryptocurrencies. You start taking your money and you put it into cryptocurrency. You know what they do? They immediately convert it over to dollars and they spend it. They buy a fucking island in the Bahamas. Are Not you, with Bitcoin, with I, dollars. They convert it to real money and buy real assets with real things. Do you know you can go buy silver and gold with Bitcoin? Directly without converting it into US yeah, but dollars. That, all that is is all that is is because the the pyramid. Correct. Is, it all has an so assigned big. value of it US has an assi it has yeah. assigned value, but it has an assigned value because people are, the people at the top are immediately converting it into real money and they are buying assets with that real money. Do you know that Glock's starting to pay out all their contracts with Bitcoin? It, well, again. So what you, are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to immediately convert all that money over. It. I'm going to immediately convert all that money in, or all that Bitcoin into a hard asset. What will that be? I mean, if it's a Ferrari, it's better than Bitcoin. And that's a no winner. Color Ferrari. It has to be red. I agree. And it has to be uh, a, a not a T-top. Uh, what a Magnum? Yeah, it has to be the. Cabriolet. What, was, was Magnum's a Cabriolet? You I just started old. Uh, I can't remember. I just started rewatching that show, and have yeah, you watched the new ones? That's the first. No, I can't. 
it's lame. I watched the first one and I'm like, what episode one? You you throw the Ferrari off a cliff? How about how it's about lame? Are you aware there's a Hawaii Five O? Yes, show. It, it also was lame. Yeah, you, you guys. And they were all seals. Everyone yeah. was a fucking it, it was that, a seal. Uh, that's the that's the common thread. You have to be a if you're not a. If but when they seals, were making those original movies, nobody knew what seals were. Right. Nobody knew what nobody knew what seals yeah. were. It's actually funny. I was watching. So again, I'm rewatching Magnum PI, and Magnum, it's classic. Like he is classic. He is the classic 1980s man. And I say it still holds up, (laughs) but when you watch the flashbacks to Vietnam, it's, it's, it's atrocious. You're like, Oh my God, (laughs) where did they get those uniforms and the guns? Jesus Christ, you guys couldn't afford. And then like they fly in a, all their, all their uh, Vietnam helicopters, like a bell 301 or 30 something. It's, it's not even a, it's like a news helicopter and shit. They're flying in. It's like, Oh my God. And even the, uh, I can't think of his name. Orville. Uh, Orville, he's the door gunner. <laughs> he's the door gunner in this helicopter, and he has an M16, and he's just holding it over his head, shooting, <laughs> shooting it out of the helicopter so they can be rescued. I mean, I love you, Magnum. But there probably was no liaison between your military Vietnam. and tech advisors. There was no tech advisor. Well, I mean, again, you think about it. It was just a. It was just a. It was a low budget TV show, like it was a it was a low budget TV show. So there was no. There was there wouldn't have been no budget, and at, at the time that that came out, at the time that that came out, you think about it in the fuck I don't know well, early eighties at least. Tom Selleck's still alive. Tom Selleck's still alive. Wasn't he the president of NRA at one point? Yeah, or I something? think he was for a little while. But I mean, you think about it, early eighties, there wasn't no, there wasn't no military. They weren't they weren't going to the military and asking for advisors on how you did this shit. Or and I think it, I think it when. When uh, Magna PI first came out, if they had actually went to the teams and went, "Hey, we're looking to make a realistic rendered, uh, you know, we want to make this as realistic as we possibly can for the TV show," I think at that time the teams would have been like, mm, "No, we're not showing you any of that shit," because you know there was yeah. a time when Navy SEALs didn't just write books and make movies. Uh, so I, I think they would have. I think they probably would have said, "No, we don't. We're not interested in exposing." tactics that we're still using or anything like that so so it was hokey you know you could tell you could tell that who does who wrote magnum is it em fleming yeah you could tell he was had it, wait was it em fleming no em fleming was james bond i think yeah anyways you could tell that the writer of that show had no idea he had no idea what so do you know <laughs> what uh, anybody did in the do you know higgins in the new tv show is a girl which makes no sense she's hot it, again, makes no sense because Magnum would be banging Higgins. Uh, he's banging Higgins. Oh, okay. I, I, or they fell in. I don't know that he's. Yeah, banging. it's terrible. I, maybe they didn't. It's and terrible. She's like, That's she's, just, she's got ninja skills. Hey, stop! Stop trying to remake these things and make them woke. You just you just ruin. Okay, them. so who's more of who's the, who's more of a man, um, Tom Selleck or John Wayne? It's a tough one because Quigley's good. Um, I mean John Wayne. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with John. I'm gonna, Wayne. I'm gonna go with John Wayne. Wasn't there? Now, I, I will say the one thing about Tom Selleck that I really, really like, and maybe I know John Wayne was kind of the same thing, but he was uh, more of a movie star versus Tom Selleck has been a. Uh, he's more of a TV star, right? He, he obviously Tom Selleck has done movies, but his claim to fame is through TV. I think once you do TV, you're doomed. In you the old days, movies. it used to be that yeah. way. Yeah, it used to be if you were doing TV, you're doomed. But now, you know, like with Kevin, you know, with Netflix and all that, you're kind of, you can do both. Uh, but I will say that Tom Selleck, I bet he's done more movies. I bet he's done more than John Wayne did. And John Wayne did a lot. He did over a hundred movies. Isn't there a movie where John Wayne, there was a kid or something and the mom's like, be careful, little Timmy can't swim. And he literally he yeah, took he throws the kid him in, and threw him in the water. Just <laughs> throws him in the, throws him in the river. And she's like, he's like, he can swim now. <laughs> yeah. And and the the funny part is, She's like, well, what if he's, if he can get to the other side of the bank? She says something about, you know, him needing rescue. And John Wayne's like, well, you can go in and get him. And she looks at him and she goes, well, I can't swim either. And then her eyes get real big and she takes off running. Because <laughs> she knows John Wayne's about to throw her in the water. 
Oh yeah. So, but I will say that uh, the one thing I like about uh, um, Magnum is he's pretty consistent. Like he's his who who he like. You're not gonna watch. You're not gonna watch him in a movie where you're like, man, he's he's really playing that character. It, I feel like he's always who he is. Always right. He character. has a he has a set of moral convictions that he's always using in his lifestyle. When do you when do you watch Magnum PI? Usually late at night. What's late at night? Did you watch it last night? Nine thirty ten. Did I watch Magnum last night? No, because I'm, I'm, I got, uh, I got stuck on Tom Clancy's uh, Jack Ryan, the TV show. Yeah, I've not seen a single minute of it. I, you know, I forced myself because it's, I think there's six seasons now or five seasons. I forced myself when that came up. I'm like. It's not going to be any good. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. And then Do just you know, last week, I I turned it on, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is pretty good. Do you know Tom Clancy's still writing? Is he really? You know he's dead, right? Well, well then I don't know how he's still writing. He has a ghostwriter. Okay. Yeah. Do you know Mark? Is he good? Yeah. Do you know who Mark Greeny is? No. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this. You probably, if he's got a ghost, I don't know. Are you supposed to be saying that? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to have this conversation. Look this up and see if you can find it on if you find it on the internet, leave this in here. If it's not on the internet, we got to cut this little piece out. So, Mark Greeny wrote a book called The Gray Man. Okay. New York Times bestseller. He's written several. Is that the is that the movie that the is that yes. the book that oh, that's such a good. Okay, so Gray such Man. A good movie. Mark Greeny writes this book. He comes out, trains at TAC Response. He lives right in Memphis. Okay. Um, met him a few times. He works SOE into Gray Man. He works Tactical Response into the book. Um, wrote a five, six, seven more books. Teamed up and co-wrote with Tom Clancy. And now is writing the Tom Clancy books. I believe that's public knowledge. I think that's out there. Mark Greeny. Yep. Tom yep, Mark Greeny. Um Great wordsmith. Um, Jack Carr. Fucking, if you have, if that's not on your radar. No, I know Jack Carr. Yeah. Yeah. We, we built gear for him out of mom's garage. If you look at his Instagram, he's got a bunch of pics. Like, his books are amazing, too. And there's a TV show coming out for that also. Um, Jack Carr did, who did the terminal list? That was Jack Carr. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so his, his stuff's already out there. Yeah. So both of them doing huge stuff, fucking very, very interesting to listen to them interview. And it, it's just fucking very neat to watch them having known them 20 years now and watch their careers and, and how they just progress. It's just fucking amazing. Um, Anyways, yeah. So, I'm so stuck on Jack Ryan. Okay, I'm stuck so on Jack Ryan. Is that an hour show, or do you watch like hours of it? Oh, fuck, I, I watch hours of you it. You fall asleep. I, on I, I know. I you don't. You still have that couch there? No. Yeah, we still have the couch, but that's in that's in the that would be in the family room. I have my own. I have my own viewing area. Are you on, I watch my own a stuff. Caught with a sleeping bag? No, no. I'm in, sitting in a chair. I I literally have to like I'll watch it and I'll realize I'll realize that I've just watched like four hours of the shit and I'll be like, you're done for the night, Jack. And I have to forcibly turn them off and walk away from it. Cause I know I'll, I'll, I'll stay up till two, you know, three o'clock in the morning watching every episode going, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I got it. So okay. what time did you get in bed last night? Uh, last night was early 1130. Okay. What time did you get up this morning? Six. Really? Yeah. Cause the girls were, uh, what girls? The, Gina's mom and her sister, they came out on the porch and were like cackling. Got it. Woke me up. Got it. Because I was sleeping in the camper. Really? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, we, we ju I just had... <sighs> Too many girls in the house? No, I had. I just had uh, $1,300 worth of work done on it because the freeze, that flash freeze we had this year just blew everything out on it. So I had there to, was still water in I the I had system. to have all the pipes... I had a bunch of pipes fixed, the water heater, a uh, new water heater. What camper are we? Are we talking about the Mercedes? Yeah. The air conditioner wasn't working right. Uh, so You would think they just have a little thing that you open and it lets all the water out of the system. They do. They do. But it, it doesn't, because of the way that flash freeze that we had this year, because of how quick it happened, it wasn't enough space. 
So I had the same thing. Like at the church, I blew all the this year. The church has never, the church has never had a freeze problem. Uh, and this year, I turned all the faucets on in the thing, so every faucet was running, and it froze so fast that it just blew those pipes. And so I had a bunch of work done on the camper, and then uh, uh, Gina wanted to clean it, so we set it up. We set it up, opened everything up, and ran the air conditioner to make sure it works, hooked all the water up, make sure everything's working right. And then because it was running, I'm like, no, I'm going to camp. So I just went and stayed in the, in the camper. Who did all the work on it? A uh, guy in Clarksville did a real good job. Like, How'd you find him? Uh, through a mutual friend. Is he like an automotive guy or like an he's overland a, camper he, No, guy? he's a camper dude. He's a, he's a camper dude. But the air conditioner... Reality is the air conditioner has never worked right since we bought it. Never worked right. Took it back to Camping World. They went through it, and the guy's like, I can't find anything wrong with it. I don't know why it's not working. We got it to work. Is this a pre-owned, or they sell? No, this is fucking brand new, they bro. They sprinters is, there? This is, this is a... Coleman, isn't it? This is a sprinter with a Coleman on top of it. And so... Never took it there. You know, again, I have to go all the way to Jackson to get anything done at, at Camping World. Camping World fucked around. Matter of fact, Camping World, you suck. I'm going to tell you this right now. Camping because, World, like, so Gander Mountain in Jackson yeah, is it's Camping World. Camping now, World. Yeah. And those motherfuckers don't put their flag up. They got that giant fucking flagpole over because there. Because their CEO is an asshole. He's a fucking, he's a left-wing turd. Really? Yeah. And, again, I hate to prestige Camping World because there are good people that work there. But they don't know shit about campers. I took this. I took this up to Clarksville. I'm like, hey, he's like, is this brand? He goes, is this brand new? I go, yeah, we bought it brand new. He goes, this still has to be under warranty, and they wired the whole fucking thing wrong. So he had to rewire it. And guess what? Camping World, my air conditioner works fine now. I don't get any E1 codes. You guys had it, and you didn't. You couldn't figure it out. Is I mean, this, is this an AC through the dash, or is this no? Like for AC, the camper? It's, it's for the camper. The, the real AC. And I, I will say this, and I, I get it. I did buy because the goal was to transport mom around, right? To be able to take mom to go visit everybody. And so I did buy this camper kind of at the end of COVID. Not not the end of COVID, but kind of yeah. late in COVID. And so I am sure that everybody they had working. Like, I don't believe that anything during COVID, like if you, if you were to buy a a Mercedes Benz, right? It that was built during COVID is as good as one that was built before COVID. We saw that a lot um, with the Harvest Right freeze dryers, right? So everybody had Harvest Right. We bought one. Ours worked perfect. A bunch of people. We had a lot of conversations, and people started buying them. And guys are like, "Man, my my freeze dryer is just not working right. It's got this code." And I'm like, "That's eh, probably a you problem. Like ours works perfect, right?" And then somebody we know bought three of them and had this problem and that's what that's what had happened they ramped so fast, fast yeah when people started homesteading and realized like oh shit maybe we should grow some of our own food okay now we grow our food what do we how do we preserve it and they just ramped up so quickly they're out of utah and i think the problems are all solved now i don't see a lot of grumblings about that anymore but yeah that that happened with all kinds of stuff yeah I, so i think that's part of it the coleman like again the mercedes-benz the the Sprinter? Yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, guys uh, at Mercedes, please make a, a Sprinter truck. I'll buy 10 of them. Like, that thing, you know, I, I have, obviously I've taken this to California and back, and it drives like a dream. Like, it, you don't even realize that you have a camper on there because it drives so well. And I didn't need any, uh, like, you don't do your first oil change on the Sprinter until you're at 100,000 miles, which, which I was like, I can't be right, guys. You need to. And they're like, no, it's right. The only thing I will say is, again, uh, Mercedes has the same problem that probably every tech technical vehicle has, is it throws a lot of codes, but the codes don't mean anything, right? You have a reader? No, I don't have a code reader. But I mean, Bro, meaning I took it. A couple hundred bucks, you can buy a reader. Yeah, but I, I, when I went into Mercedes, I was like, hey, it's doing this, it's doing this. And he's like, yeah, that's warranty shit, and we don't have that part yet. It's like... If you if you're driving down the road and you hit a you hit a bump, not anything serious, but a pothole, the emergency communication thing turns on where they're like, <laughs> "Hey, are you in danger? Have you died?" It's just is it a real person? No, I, you have to. So it it will 
basically what it does is it lights up to show you that it's available, and then you have to push it to to call to talk to somebody. So is it OnStar? It's not or OnStar. Some it's some, it's something specific Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Guys, if you have OnStar and your your shit, it, it knows where you are all the time. It's oh yeah, it knows where you are. It's they can they they actually can open up that channel without you knowing yep. they're they're listening to the channel. It's, I mean, I guess it's a whatever. You know, it, it is it is the world we live in. Because if you have a phone in your pocket, they know where you're at, anyways. So does your your does your thing take death? Yes, it does. It does. Could you it, just delete that? I mean, maybe you could, but it. it you don't care. It, I don't care. It's in the in the long run. In the long run, the fucking van runs so good, like it runs so. Like, again, I went when I took the thing in for its uh, oil change. I went in and I'm like. Who's selling Sprinter vans? Because I'm like, maybe I need to get rid of my truck and just go full Sprinter van. Because the that Sprinter van is top notch. I love it. Now they do have a lot of warranty recalls on the Sprinter vans, uh, and it's all they have a lot of warranty recalls. But and I would say it's all dumb shit. Don't get mad at me, uh, Mercedes. It's all like dumb shit. Little little glitches in the. It, it, it's it's not anything that has to do. It's not anything that has to do with the drivetrain right. with that badass. Yeah, they're sorted. It's all stupid Amazon, codes Amazon's and shit like that. Yeah. Those trucks. It's all um, stupid codes for, you know, Pierre's got a guy. Blinker you, fluid and if all you that need stupid a guy, shit. Pierre's got a guy. I, I I can't I can't And then Pierre's got a friend who builds um I don't know, dozens a year of adventure vans on those sprinter vans yeah i can't I, I can't say anything bad about the mercedes the, the mercedes place in nashville cool those guys they were they were on point when uh when i got there they you know it was it was i was very well treated i really liked those i really liked that dealership i mean they even took me we started talking about i don't know how me and the guy started talking about uh, m151s 5 and then i mentioned I mentioned that the M151 was replaced by the G-Wagon, and he's like, oh, shit, we got a military one in the back. <laughs> like, you should no, go. You don't. I, yeah, I did. I was like, no, you don't. There's you got no a, way. You got you got, a Jeep. I go, there's no way you got a, a military one in the back. And he's like, no, uh, one of the owners, uh, it was some deal where it was like the first one, it was the first one in the country, and so one of the owners the got it and brought it in a dealership. And he's like, we got it in the back. You're more than well to take a look at it, and I went back there and took a look at it. And I'm like, "Yeah, this is a this is a military G wagon, but it's not a military like hand stitched leather seats. Like it was. I'm like, I, I I'm, I'm like, how much? It's not what the Marines had. Yeah, I go, how much are you gonna sell this for? He goes, Oh, we're gonna list it at hundred grand. But I mean, everything was. What was that thing? The that engine was, bay was poly. I mean, everything what was on that it was thing sweet. in those G wagons that was blowing up. Do you remember that? Like somebody had a, a Kevlar sitting there. And it fucking launched it like thirty feet when that thing I, popped. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I didn't. I didn't get any. I didn't have any road time in the G wagon. Jared, I think Jared had might have been those Jared. Yeah, it might have been you Jared. You were at school. You were at the school. Uh, and Jared was in a platoon. Maybe they might. I I never had any G wagon time. It was all M one five one. That we were the last. Uh, two one was the last battalion to use the the M one the fast attack vehicles M one five ones. And they were going to replace. So I, again, going to we were going to Desert Scimitar, and they're like, "Hey, you're not going to use any of these jeeps. It's going to be all G wagons." And so, is that like Cobra Gold or something? Yeah, it's it's well, it's just a thing for a weapons company to go out and drive around the desert. Uh, and then, like a month before Desert Scimitar, they're like, "Recon took all the G wagons. We're not getting any. You got to get these guys spun up on M one five ones." And I'm like, "No, because at the time I was driving one." as a daily pleasure vehicle. Uh, I'm like, no problem. We get these kids. Nobody knew how to drive a stick. <laughs> it was a fucking night. It was we were a, talking about that. The other yeah, day. It was a goddamn nightmare getting these kids, uh, trained up to do, uh, to just drive an M one five one. And, uh, you know, my master sergeant's like, we got it all covered. Everything. You're going to go down, get your, get everybody a license. Nobody even got out of the parking lot. Like, no, cause they, they there's all these, again, Never having, never having been responsible for vehicles, I didn't understand how crazy the Marine Corps was about vehicles. And so there was all these stupid checks that you had to do before you left the parking lot. And so they, they never got out of the parking lot. The guy was just like, failed, failed. I'm like, what the fuck are you failing for? He didn't adjust his mirror. 
He didn't look at this. I'm like, we're okay. not even on pavement. I go, you, I go, nobody, nobody from your office sent any of this information down saying that we needed to do any of this. I would have had them done it if I'd have known that that was the requirement. And he's like, well, it's the requirement. So you guys, I'm like, man, I, w- I was actually very mad at that corporal. So I call my master and I'm like, hey, we're fucked. Can, you, pu- can you punish him? No, no. He's outside because he, he, he's operating outside of the outside of my command. You couldn't, or, you couldn't do anything that would affect no, no, his no, life? No, no, no. not at all. Not at all. He was division, you know, he was, he was part of the division, which again, he was doing his job. The problem was it had not been relayed to the command exactly what needed to be done to ensure these guys got driver's license. So nobody really knew, which is, which was bullshit. Cause the, the motor pool chief really should have been the one going, Hey, this is, these are all the things you need to do, blah, 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 blah. But the, the Jeeps at that time were kind of the, they were kind of the, the bastards of the battalion and nobody, they didn't maintain them. You know, I had 12 M one five ones, but only eight of them worked. Uh, so they didn't maintain cause they were, they were on their way out. So again, I don't fault the Marine Corps on that because the, the, the Jeeps were on their way out. Everything was supposed to be replaced by G wagons. And so, uh, it was a pain in the ass getting those guys licensed, but we finally, they worked out a deal. They did a, my math sergeant called their math sergeant and they're like, Hey, just make sure these guys can drive because they're leaving in two weeks. And so they, they ultimately, uh, figured it out and got everybody licensed. And we went to desert scimitar. Uh, but the M one five one, even you think about, uh, the ones that we had had to have been probably f- at least 50 years old, maybe even older than that. So they were, they were post Vietnam vehicles, maybe made in the seventies or maybe, maybe early eighties, but, uh, they were old vehicles. They had been converted over to fast attacks. That's where they put all the stupid uh, heavy piping and shit on them for the machine guns and stuff. But even then, they were still better than the Humvees. Like when we once we got off road, the the CO was always on the radio telling me to slow down. How many? Slow do you down. Have? You guys are going too fast. Slow down. You're going too because they just couldn't keep up. How many do you have right now? Four. They function. No, we're getting ready to do full. Full restoration. Even the one you had that isn't running? It's, it's not running? Yeah, I took it apart. Jeff used to drive that. I put 10,000 miles on an M151 Jeff, as a POV. Jeff would take a, a drive that should take an hour to get to my house, and it would take two and a half hours. Well, they only go 55 miles an hour. uncomfortable Jeep. Holy shit. That was the best. Shit. I loved it. And you felt like you were going to die every time you got on it, and we drove someplace because it only had a, a lap belt in it. Yeah, did they do only have lap belts that you never wear? So, have you seen the parades? The video of the parade where it's it's old dudes. I don't know how old they are, but they have this this military jeep, and then they take the jeep apart uh-huh. in front of everybody, yeah. and then put it back together. Holy shit! Yeah, GP. I want to say that's the GPW. It's it's basically a World War II jeep, and they designed it so that they could put it in crates get it somewhere and then just average Joe's could put it back together. Yeah. That's super yeah. neat. It is pretty awesome. So fast attack vehicles in the military can be a lot of things while, while you yeah. think of M one five one was a fast attack vehicle. They also then became uh, sand rails yeah, and it's usually, buggies you, and all kinds of stuff. Usually when you look up fast attack vehicles, what you're going to, what's going to pop up is the, uh, the, the Chenoweth. 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 Yeah. The Chenoweth. They were in Santee. Sand, sand rails. Yep. Where you got two, you got a driver, a co-driver, and then you got a dude up top on a yeah, 50 those cal. Yeah, those were class 10 cars. Um, yeah. I actually saw one at Cars and Coffee a year ago in Franklin, and the dude's got all the shit for I mean, everything. Yeah. They're yeah. not very good. No, compared to nowadays, they're definitely not. Well, I mean, it, even back then, the problem the problem that they had with the sand rails was they weren't four-wheel drive. So you, you could get them. They weren't four-wheel drive. And again, you know, the U S military is not putting paddle tires on those motherfuckers. They're just putting, they're putting regular road tires on them and they're driving them out in the sand. So you could get them pretty stuck. Did you ever have any law enforcement harassment driving the Jeep? Never. I had a, I had a pause. I got to pee. Okay. What am I doing? We're back on. And we're talking about M one five ones. So maybe you know this or maybe you don't know this. I had an M one five one, a two that I got in a trade and I was fortunate enough to get it registered in the state of California to put a license plate on it. Was that difficult? It was not difficult for me, but, uh, my friend who also, <laughs> who also had one who got it also on a trade cause he fucked up. What is a trade? 
What do you mean? What do you mean you trade it? You for you it? you know you trade you uh, this tit for tat. You got a tit for tat on things. Uh, but when I, if you look at the M one five one manual, it's not a Jeep. The M one five one manual it, it it's called a quarter ton truck or half. I'm sorry, half ton truck. It's not considered a Jeep. So when I went to the DMV in San Mar in uh, San Clemente, small DMV in San Clemente, which is this is the key. Go to a small uh, DMV in San Clemente, and I have you know bill sale, and I've got this. I got the military manual that calls it a quarter half ton truck, and uh, and I go, it's never been registered before. And he's like, well, I got to take a look at it. I'm like, that's fine. I, I drove it here. It's in the parking lot, and uh, and we go, <laughs> and he looks at it. And he's like, where's the serial number? Well, the military has these data plates that they put on there, and the serial number is on there. And he's like, oh, okay, that's that's right. It's on the paperwork, and he's like. This looks like a Jeep. I go, I know it does, doesn't it? But it's really, <laughs> the military calls it a half-ton truck. And so he looks at the thing and he goes, you're right. They do call it a half-ton truck. And so it was actually registered as a truck, not a Jeep, which at the time there were some shenanigans going on with California. So it saved me a bunch of money because it was a truck and not a Jeep. Uh, and it didn't have, there were certain things it didn't have to do, I didn't have to do. Um, and so I got it registered. And then my buddy... He decides he's going to do it, but he goes to a big DMV. <laughs> and when he goes to the big DMV, he's like, I got this Jeep I need to register. And they're like, Jeep, we need to see it. They do the same thing, and they go out there, and he shows them the data plate, and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. you got to have all the what's that shit they put on cars now, the tag that's in your window. What's it called? VIN yeah. number? VIN number. You have to have VIN numbers all over this shit. You got to have yeah, an engine block. You got yeah. multiple VIN. And he's like, fuck. And he's like, how do I do that? Like, you got to go to the, you got to go to the. Uh, CHP inspection. CHP thing. inspection place, the at I-5 <laughs> checkpoint. And so he had to drive, he had to drive the Jeep, you know, and you know where he lives. He had to drive the Jeep all the way there and they put three VIN numbers on it. And then he was finally able to get it. How did they put the it. VIN numbers on it? Uh, rivets. Okay. So they just put little plates on yeah, it. Yeah. They just put little plates and on it. And they there. didn't give him no shit about it. They didn't give him no shit about it either. So there which, was, there was a lot of stuff going on. There's always been bullshit like on, um, custom built cars, you know, yeah. kit cars and stuff and, uh, salvage titles and, um, dirt bikes like guys were taking these dual sport bikes and some places you walk in the dmv and they just give you a plate right and then other places they it, they wouldn't give you a plate and then you would have a plate from your town and you'd be fine but you'd be on the highway and the highway patrol guys would lose their shit and then you'd have to go to court somewhere else and they'd take your fucking plate like it was happening even here we can we can get a medium speed vehicle plate for the razors and the dirt bikes, but every now and then you'll get a cop that'll fucking just hurt. Like they're giving Jeremy shit at a gas station and they're like, you can't drive this out here. He's like, well, the courthouse gave me this plate. Well, that doesn't meet law. Well, then you need to go talk to the courthouse. They gave me this plate. So you can just get some cop who's overzealous or right. whatever. Well, they need to make their income, which is, well, it kind of, I mean, I mean, they all fall under the same court you would think they'd have their shit aligned well, sometimes people think that they're you know that they're the they're the they're the uh they're the wall that's holding back all the the criminals and they have to enforce the minor infraction in order to make sure that yeah harassing and collecting yeah tax collectors so, so got this m151 and again at this time the marine corps still has m151s so i'm using it and i'm going to sotg i'm driving from uh san clemente down the down the uh, 10 or five down five. the five to Pogus gate going through Pogus gate. I'm doing this every day. I never have a problem while I'm at SOTG. Like no one ever blinks an eye. No one ever. I mean, they, everybody thinks it's cool obviously. Cause I'm driving a Jeep around. They want to know where they can get one and uh, I don't have a problem. Well, I go from SOTG to two one. <laughs> now I'm driving down to camp Horno, right? I'm driving from, uh, San Clemente to Camp Horno, and the the first incident I have is a Roadmaster. <laughs> I'm driving, you know, I'm driving. Tell them what a Roadmaster is for uh, people that don't know. Basically, Roadmasters ensure that military vehicles, that when you're driving military vehicles around, that the the individuals driving are following all the rules and laws of the road. And if a military vehicle uh, goes down somewhere, like if it's if it's driving, 
you know, if you have to drive uh, to 29 Palms, you got to get on, on regular roads. If uh, that military vehicle has a problem, breaks down or whatever, the roadmasters are the ones that come out and make sure that you're able to get from point A to point B. It's a, it's like a, I'm sorry if you were ever a roadmaster. It's like an auto club for. It's a pretty good job. Yeah, though, it's, a, it? it's, yeah, it's, a, I would say it was a good job for them. It's like an auto club for the military, but they also, they don't just make sure you get to point from point A to point B. They also make sure that you're following the rules and regs that were set up. And so at the time, if you were in a tactical vehicle, you had to have a, you had to have your uh, flak jacket on, helmet on, <laughs> and an A driver that also had flak jacket and helmet on and seatbelt. So you had to have all that in order to drive a, it didn't matter what it was, five ton, Humvee, whatever. You had to have all that to go from point A to point B. And so I'm in my soft cap, my camis, and I'm just motor, motoring to, to Camp Horno. And this dude. And you know what he thought? He's like, oh my God, he's got the wrong hat on. Well, this dude in a minivan comes flying up behind me, honking his horn. Well, again, he's in a minivan. Obviously, if they wanted you to have the powers to pull me over, you would have sirens. No, well, he's 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 off. He's he's not working. So so off duty. He's off duty. He chases me down in his minivan and actually cuts me off, and, <laughs> and like cuts me off. Jumps out of the van. He's got a radio in his hand. He's in civilian clothes, and he immediately comes up and he's like, "I'm Master Sergeant So and So. I run the, uh, you know, I run the section and." What the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to Horno, and I'm pointing at the windshield. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to Horno, and I'm pointing at the windshield. It's like, oh my god! And you're a staff sergeant. I cannot believe this. You know better. What? You're not even supposed to be driving. He's like just losing his shit, <laughs> and he won't let me say anything. He's losing his shit. So I'm point. I point at the window. I point at the, the my license plate is actually in the spare tire. I'm pointing at the spare. I'm like, mass sergeant. Mass Sergeant, he's like, I don't want to hear it. You, you, there's no excuse for this. You don't have any of your your PP and E on. You don't have an A driver, and you know you're not supposed to be driving these vehicles, Staff Sergeant. I'm like, Mass Sergeant, Mass Sergeant, and he won't listen. And he just he gets on the radio and he calls PMO, and he's like, I need you to get a Roadmaster over here immediately. I have a Staff Sergeant who's driving an M151 without any safety equipment. Blah, blah. He goes like, what command are you with? I'm like, I'm with 2-1. Blah. He's like, I know who runs that. And he, he's just going off. <laughs> he's going off. And then I can hear that the PMO guy, the PMO guy keeps, while he's yelling at me, the PMO guy goes, Master Sergeant, Master Sergeant. And Master Sergeant's like, what? What do you want? He goes, green M151? And he's like, of course it's green. <laughs> he's like, of course it's green. <laughs> and he goes, that's a POV, Mass Sergeant. And he's like, what are you talking about? There are no M, there's no POV M151s. He's like, no, what I'm telling you is that's a personally owned vehicle. It's Staff Sergeant. He's a Staff Sergeant, right? And he goes, he looks at me, he's like, yes. And I'm still going like this. I'm pointing at the front <laughs> windshield. I'm still pointing at the front windshield. And then he, he looks at my hand and then he looks at the windshield because you got to, back then you had to get stickers. I don't think they do it anymore, but you had to have your sticker on there. And so I had stickers on the front windshield that declared it a registered POV. And he's like, "I'll call you back." And then he, and then he's like, "Where'd you get it? How, uh, this is fucking awesome. I want one." You know. Then he was then he's my friend because you know now he knows that I'm driving. I'm not I'm not just some rogue staff sergeant now cruising that he, the base. Now that he can't burn you is more. What yeah, it was. cruising the base with this with my M151. You now, think they'd get bonuses for the way they fucking act? Now I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I did cross the line with the M151. Like because we were still using them, <laughs> there were certain there were certain times where the sniper platoon would be doing something that required a safety vehicle that I would use the M151 as said safety vehicle because nobody it you know if the if the CO drove up he would just be like all right, everything's good to go because there's the safe, there's a safety vehicle. He wouldn't notice that there was a license plate on it. And I had a, I had a radio. <laughs> I mean, it was decked out. I had a complete, I had a complete uh, radio system set in, set up in it also. So I could actually talk to long rifle. So I would use my radio system to talk to long rifle and check in on live fire ranges. And so, 
you know, I, all I would need was a corpsman, and then I had my radio and my safety vehicle. Uh, and then the, the next time was, again, I was at 1st Marine Division uh, at Camp Horno, and we had this <laughs> we had this Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Trescott, that would yell at people from his window. Like, he was the... He was exactly the sort of major that you that you would think from the movies. Like, if you were wearing the wrong color socks and you were a hundred yards away from the COC, he would be yelling out his window at you, and you'd have to run over. <laughs> like he was, you know, he was the he was the hard line marine. And uh, one day I'm coming in and I'm driving past the regimental COC, and they had just gone on a run. Him and the colonel, <laughs> him and the colonel, and. I turn the corner and they're standing there in PT gear and I'm just, I hit my five mile an hour speed limit and I'm just like, and I motor right by him and I see him do the look. He does the hard look on me and is like, that motherfucker is wearing a soft cap. He doesn't have his flag jacket on. Whereas the, I, I see it all just go like the Terminator and all the information is just spilling out in his head. And he's, he's like, Hey Marine. And I'm just like, driving up the hill to get to the barracks he turns and starts running behind me <laughs> like he's running he's chasing me in the jeep and i am going like this i'm like i'm pointing i'm you know over my shoulder pointing at the wheel just pointing at the spare tire he's running facing and, the license and he's plate. running running right at it and i could see there was a point where we, we were already past the we were already past the PX, and he's running full sprint. Now I'm only going five miles an hour, but uh, he's running full sprint. Not that he wasn't running fast. I'm just saying I was I had got mm -hmm. up ahead of him, and so he's catching up to me. And I can see again the I can see the Terminator information going in his head, and I could tell immediately when he sees the license plate, and he's like, and just stops in the middle of the road. And just stands in the middle of the road as I drive all the way up to the barracks. And he's just sitting there and the wheels are turning in his head while he's trying to figure out, how is that happening? How is that legit? How did he get, uh, you know, it just, and then he just turned around and went back. And the, the crazy thing is, I really thought that uh, I was going to have to go see my Sergeant Major and then have to go see him and all, because again, I didn't stop when he was yelling at me, but I think he was just like, I'm not even going to open that can of, <laughs> can of worms. And then we had a uh, we had a Chenoweth uh, fast attack vehicle, but it wasn't uh, the your unit had it. No, 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 no. The, the right, Marine Corps. Right. Okay, the Marine, so that's what I the other one I'm talking. Yeah, about. the Marine Corps never at the battalion level they never bought off on them. Mm -hmm. uh, some so Force Recon had a couple of them and they used them for a while. But we had we have a friend who had one. Yes, uh, one of my friends had located one. But it was one of the original ones. Yes. It wasn't the, the two seat. It was a two seater. So it was a two seater. It had all the racks on it for everything and shit like that. And uh, I, I call my buddy. I'm like, hey, bring it up to Camp Pendleton. I'll, I'll drive it around. And so he brought it up to Camp Pendleton, and I played with it because I, I was in the, I was in the trailer park at the time, and, and from the trailer park, from the trailer park, you could go right into the woods, right or not. There's no woods at Pendleton, but you go right into the training area. And so I would be driving around the training area in this thing. And I, uh, scorched the head. Anyways, I, I, it had a, it developed a gasket leak, right? It developed a, a pretty, a pretty nasty gasket. That leak. one had a Volkswagen motor in it. Yeah. It had a Volkswagen motor in it. it was, I think it was a 1200 CC. I mean, it wasn't super powerful, but it was just, it was just cool. Cause it was fucking camouflage and had all the, had all the radio shit in it and stuff. And, and so, uh, so it ended up just going in my carport and then my buddy's like, Hey, I'm going to come get it so we can get it fixed. So we can get it fixed. And so he comes up and <laughs> he decides that he can make it to where he has to go. <laughs> and so, so he which is crazy because it's a it, you know it's a it's just a doom buggy right but it again because it was military it had all the it had all the stuff on it like it had real headlights it had blinkers on it ir lights and it, shit, it had so, all yeah. that but i mean it had it had everything to be street to legal. be street legal meaning turn all, signal windshield all military all military vehicles technically have the marking all the marking stuff for for being street legal meaning an m1 abram has a turn signal in it so they can go on the road. Uh, 
so <laughs> it had all the stuff. And so he got, <laughs> he shows up in a Hawaiian shirt, flip flops and shorts, lime green sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> Those rubber ones you used to yeah. get at the gas station. And he decides that he's going to make the run all the way down to where he Didn't needs he have a to beard go. Then? No, no beard. Okay. No beard. Cause he was still, he, you know, he was still, uh, now, for you guys that don't know, this we're, it's right by San Onofre, the nuclear power plant. Yeah, so he's got a, I mean, the reality in the buggy to get to where he needed to go, he's got a two and a half hour drive. And so he gets <laughs> he gets in the buggy and he's like, on, well, the, he, on the freeway. On the freeway. He wants to wait till it's dark. On the interstate. He wants to wait till it's dark because, you know, less recognizable. And so he gets on. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually surprised that because, because he went down San Onofre. I'm surprised he didn't get rolled up by a roadmaster. That a roadmaster would have saw that and been like, "Oh, we got to get this guy," because you know he's in Hawaiian short, <laughs> and he he motors he motors down to uh, an undisclosed location in San Diego, and uh, and he's he's like, he, I don't hear anything from him, right? He just makes his trip, and, and then the next, ha- and we don't have cell phones. Yeah, there's no cell phones. So the next day I call him, I'm like, "How'd it go?" He's like, he's like, "Man, I I'm surprised at how little." Uh, how little interaction I had with law enforcement. And he goes, uh, I got to the off ramp. So he made it all the way down to where he had to go. He got to the off ramp. And when he got to the off ramp, a highway patrol guy was like, whoop, whoop, <laughs> you know, lighting him up and uh, walked up to the, you know, he pulled over. He's, they, they went off the off ramp and pulled over. So that we're not on the, we're not on the highway anymore. <laughs> and, uh, Highway patrol officer, you know, walks up, looks at Leo, <laughs> looks at the vehicle. Because, it, it, again, the vehicle is very, it, it doesn't look like a sand rail that was converted to a military vehicle. It looks like the military bought a sand rail. Because it's got all the boop, boop, all the radio shit and everything, the, the IR lights on it and all that. <laughs> and uh, looks at the vehicle, looks at. Looks at Leo. Now, Leo does not look like he sh- I should sh- own this. He looks I like sh- he stole this. Hey, you cut Leo out. Where's that out. part? You got to cut all that out. You don't got to cut it out. Just beep out Leo. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, he, he does not look like, he does not look like he's a military guy or th- that he's, you know, he w- I, obviously he didn't have his flak and helmet on and shit. And uh, the high patrol guy comes up and he looks at the vehicle and he's looking, he's looking and he, and he's like, where are you going? And he's like, Oh, just up here. Another mile. You know, he tells him where he's going. I'm just going another mile up the road. And he looks and then he's like, yep. Don't want to even want to know. And goes back to his car. <laughs> his car leaves. <laughs> Didn't even ask. Didn't even ask. And then just leaves and shit. Don't even want to know. And leaves, which was, you know, again, it's the, it's the nineties. I know you don't want to hear this, but the eighties and the nineties were so much cooler than it is now. Like just everything was way bitchiner and way cooler. We live in the lame era now. I think, I mean, there's nothing, it's just lame now. People are just lame. So have you heard of the, um, this new Mars, you know what Mars was, right? The respiratory thing Mm -hmm. before COVID. Have you heard about this new Mars Cove, Mars COVID? No, I haven't, but... Okay, so it's popped up in somewhere over in fucking Africa, and like 90 people have died from it. It's uh, it's supposed to be Mars is harder to get. It's not as virulent, but 36% of the people that get it die. The more... Uh, the mm-hmm. So when you're talking about those yes. type of viruses... Because they burn themselves out. Yeah, the, the, the... Well, the easier it is to get, so the easier it is to get... The less not, deadly Not everything, guys, so don't... Start writing this down in your book. But usually, the less deadly it is, the harder that thing is to get. Because it burns the it out. It transmission, kills itself, yeah, the, yeah. the harder the transmission is, the more likely death is okay, part of so it. Okay, so you've got all these uh, politicians talking about it. You've got uh, CDC and World Health up in arms. And they have now termed it to be Cove, uh, Mars Cove. So they're attaching COVID to it. And the, and the theory is that they are using this uh, politicians are going to use this to implement another lockdown because they have now attached COVID to it. And uh, Tim Pool 
Um, some people on Tim Pool were speaking about this uh, yesterday, I think. And they said, of course they're going to try to use it. They and, and people said, well, there's no way they're locking them down. And he goes, of course people will lock down. They let them lock them down last time. Of course you're going to have people well, here, in those towns, those cities, here's that are the, controlled from that side. They are going to lock all that shit down again. Here's the gist of it, though. The gist of it is this. Okay. All these, all these flus and viruses, they... They move in a line. So they move around the world. And we can track them as they're moving around the world, okay? If if a virus, I'm just going to say, if a virus is, if we get, doesn't matter what it is. If, we, if something happens where we have 10% fatalities, just 10%, um, well, I think even 5%. If we had a 5% fatality rate... On whatever it is, that's that's the genius of it. Is if they have a five percent fatality rate, you won't have to lock people down. You you don't have to go if if in fact your virus is legit and it's actually killing people, it's actually killing hundreds of thousands of people. Which at a five percent, you're talking millions of people are going to die. Mm-hmm. If it's actually killing people. You don't have to tell people to stay in their house. You you don't. They're gonna they're gonna self quarantine. People are gonna do it on their own. So the government does not have to tell you, hey, by the way, there's this thing out there that's killing everybody. You need to stay in your house. They don't have to, because you're gonna you are gonna be. It's just like this. Like if COVID, the first COVID, was legit, and you drove through Skid Row, and everybody was dead. You would go home. You'd be like, oh, shit, this is legit. Look at all these dead bodies. You know, if you saw the Chinese, if you saw the Chinese taking body bags out of all those apartment buildings, you'd be like, oh, shit, this is legit. So you, the government doesn't have to quarantine you. You'll self-quarantine if it's real. If it's real. Um, the reality is, and this just came out, so follow the science, guys. The reality is the science is out on COVID. And COVID is... The vaccine was more deadly than the actual yep. virus. Uh, Australia, number yep, that's one. The, that's the perfect test bed yep, right there. Off, the Australia perfect. was the number one country. And one of the number one countries, Tanzania was another one. But Australia was like the number one country uh, to be vaccinated. And they were also vaccinated before COVID made it to Australia. Oh, all, their, all their fatalities have been COVID. Or all their fatalities have been the vaccine. Mm-hmm. So... It's just interesting. I don't know if I see because because I think uh, let's just say big picture. If I was a conspiracy theorist, right? Well, Kamala Harris just came out and said now that we're reducing the population. Yes, if I was a conspiracy theorist, and I believed that, and I believed that China was attempting to take over the world, <clears throat> what I would do is I would accidentally release a virus that I knew would not be deadly. Right. To I would desensitize us. I would accidentally release a virus that I knew would not be deadly, and then I would convince Cry Wolf. I would convince the WHO and the CDC that it was deadly and that we had to vaccinate everybody. Because now I can start a campaign of doubt. I would go even further and to say that it wasn't just China, but they were in bed with all well, of the again, leaders. I just have to now the I, the, the elite, not now just I China. have to now I just have to do it uh, now I have to do is create this doubt. So you've created this doubt all over the world where people are like, yeah, that virus wasn't what you said it was, and the vaccine sucks, right? Then what you do is you wait a couple years and you let all this fucking formant, you let it percolate to the top, and then you vaccinate the people you want to keep, Yep. and you release another virus that is actually deadly, and you wipe out half the population on the planet. Did you hear that the the higher, if we're looking at vaccine deaths, the deaths were considerably higher in Republican-controlled cities? I don't know if that could be true, though, because you would think that there would be less... Because they were sending out placebos versus... You would think that there would be less... Um, you would think that there would be less uh, people that would get the vaccine. Right. Comparatively. So like, for yes. example, you know, I mean, I would say, I would say if you're going to look into that, if you're going to look for any facts, I would look at San Bernardino County because 
San Bernardino County is in the most liberal place on the face of the planet. And they were doing mandatory vaccines and San Bernardino County within the communist state of California told the county to fuck or told the state to fuck off and that they wouldn't enforce any of that. And so, well, the sheriff said that. Yes. And they did. And they, and the reality is they didn't. And when, again, I don't want to get this, I don't want to get this locked down, but certain people were going to certain places and none of those places were locked down and we were eating in regular restaurants and doing all that. So, uh, I would be interested in the mortality rate in a place like San Bernardino County, because that is a place that basically bucked the system as far as, you know, what now, again, the other problem too, is when you look at uh, cities, when you say a uh, Republican run city, cities in general, whether they have Republicans, whether they have Republicans in charge or not, are generally more liberal than say uh, Camden. Right. Got it. Yep. So when you say that they had more deaths, the question would be, were those deaths from Democrats? Right? We're, we're, because, again, a city is going to be more liberal, so they're going to have more people in a city yeah. that would actually be like, I'm woke, give me the shot. Yeah. So you don't know. You it, It's it's kind of twisting it a little bit, yeah. saying that maybe that maybe they were trying to kill yeah, Republicans. Look at, I mean, but you again, look at the people wearing costumes right now while there's no yeah. lockdowns, right? Yeah, they're still wearing their costumes. Who, who are they? You know, that's you. You know everything you need to know when you see them. Their their lives look pretty yeah, sure. They're fucking. They're they're crazy people. So I mean, I, I would I would think that uh, <clears throat> that's what we need to worry about. Is have you seen a all second, the a you, second pandemic? You know, you're aware of the Jason Aldean stuff. Yeah, but that's that's just okay. So the song came out, right? That's just try that in a small town. That's we, just everybody said that. Yeah, that's just. So the song came out. It was all over social media for a week. Didn't click on it. Had no idea what it was about. Didn't give a shit. Jason Aldean. Then the, the liberals, or, or or are we even saying liberals? I mean, most of the ones I saw were like women that are like, they the, say they're black, but they're not. They're fucking, the, the they're problem, half, they're, they're fat, they're half mixed. They're not fucking even black folks losing their shit over it every so then now there's this controversy yeah and it comes up in the local facebook group here so i click on it and i'm reading this shit and there's this there's there's two ladies in there one of them posts on all kinds of shit dog whistle this racist this yeah. uh poor like all this shit there was a lynching at the at the court square yeah 150 years ago there was a lynching at the court square there's probably one here too um but when you look at her profile every post You'll see her post several times a day yeah, on random shit that has nothing to do with racism, but everything becomes racism. And she's uh, lesbian this, racism that. But you know what happened when you go to her profile? So I've seen her enough. I'm like, okay, who is this crazy person? You know what's not on any of her pictures with her? There's not a fucking black person. There is nobody other than her and white people. Well, they're embracing and, the religion. Of yes, it. that's yeah. it. That's they're where I'm going. embracing the religion. And everything, it. half of her photos are, yeah. if they come out with a, another booster, I'm taking it and vaccine worst, this and vaccine that. The worst thing, the worst possible thing for the black community yes. is a liberal Democrat. Yeah. Because the worst possible if, thing is a liberal Democrat. If you search those, not my words, Malcolm X. What's up, brother? If you search, if you search, um, try that in a small town. All of the most viral videos, which means they're getting the mm -hmm. most views, the most push, the most reach, are all black folks going. I don't know what the problem is here. Yeah, I've seen a couple of pretty good ones where where this guy <laughs> he does a he does a parody where he he's like Jason Aldean. Don't steal stuff. <laughs> and he's like, don't kill people. Don't. And he's doing this, and you know he's got a white wig on. It's pretty funny. And then and then he's like, and they're like, and then he's on the couch. And he's like, that's totally racist. None of that shit is true. And then he's listening to like the number one rap song right now, and it's like, yeah, uh, uh, pushed the old lady down and killed her, and yeah. all that, you know. And it's like, okay, but again, I, I think it's the, it, where we've allowed a certain part of the certain part of the population that has no meaning in their life. And they're using all of this liberal. I don't think it's even meaning. I think they had to no power. create meaning. I think they, I don't even, no I don't think they have power. I mean, I think, I think initially, I think initially when they were like, you know, initially when it was the, uh, when they were doing the woman's movement there in Hollywood, what don't ask, don't or not. Don't ask, don't tell me too. Me too. I think initially me too 
when they when they pushed the Me Too agenda and people were like, "All right, sounds legit. Let's support Me Too." I think that those those dog whistling blue hairs were like, "We have power," and so they kept doing that, and they kept going after people, and it was working to a certain extent. I think we've got to the tipping point where no one cares what those people have to say because what they have to say means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Again, if you run around and call everybody racist, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a, it doesn't mean anything. You've taken you've actually taken the word and you've you've desensitized it. You've made it so that it doesn't really mean anything when, you know, there's there's David Dukes in the world. There there are real people out there that that have Hardcore racist beliefs. That was another thing she said. Duke, Duke was the Ku Klux Klan guy, right? Yeah, he's a, out of Escondido or somewhere. I don't know where he. I mean, he, he ran for wherever. governor or mayor or senator or something. Maybe. Um, that's the other thing she said. She's like, I hear, I hear people using the N word around here all the time, and there's Ku Klux Klan stuff around, and a bunch of people got on, and this dude's like, or this girl's like, I'm Asian. I've never heard anything racist said to me around me near me a bunch of people like jumped on there i was gonna reach out to her and be like hey why don't you come on the podcast i mean you know it's they're they're it's a dog whistle they, they're they're not pointing out anything specific and that's why that's why you you now know the term microaggression mm-hmm. you know the term microaggression because it was like hey guess what all this shit we're saying is real is not real so we're gonna make up a new word microaggression you know what it's just because you're white. That's what makes you a racist. It's it's all bullshit. But and yeah. most most of the people I hear screaming racism are white. Well, yeah, they are white. They're, people. they're people that have they are they are people that have no meaning in their life. They have no future. They don't have anything. They're still living in their basement, or they're a super liberal that has a a, a college education that they can't do anything with. And so they again they're going to dye their hair blue and they're going to fucking spout all this nonsense and. People will follow it because it's the new church. It's the new religion. But again, if you sit down and have a real conversation, they can't, they cannot back up anything. They say nothing. They can't back up anything. Like again, I'm in the South. Like, I don't, I don't want to say Tennessee's deep South because Tennessee was kind of blue and gray. I don't want to say Tennessee's deep South, but I'm in the South. And when every single time I have heard somebody go, Oh, that's a, that's a clan. You don't, you know, the clan clan, this or that you, you can't, Oh, you can't go there every single time. I'm like, tell me where that is. I want to go. I want to see this shit. I want a bunch of white dudes with torches to come out of the woods and be like, Hey, you're not from around here. Are you? I want that. I want to see it. Show me where it's, show me where it's happening. Now I get it. There are neighborhoods that I probably shouldn't be going through right there's there's some there's some neighborhoods i probably shouldn't be going through yeah but who ran but, out in those neighborhoods? it's black people that but run again out in those neighborhoods there's some there's you know well it, the reality is it doesn't matter what nationality it doesn't matter what nationality you you want to throw out there whether it's there's my point is Mexican it's not neighborhoods, it ain't clan people it, it's just you ain't from around here yes. that's the issue yes so i mean even i had i had somebody here once i had my hands in my pocket and I don't know what I was doing. And he's like, are you in the, are you in the clan? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Do, do I look like I'm in the clan? <laughs> I'm not even white. They can't, they, they wouldn't take me. I don't think. And, uh, and he's like, well, you're making the symbol. I'm like, what, what? And he, and we, we started talking about it and I go, and then again, because I want to know, I want to know what's, how legit this is. What's I'm, the symbol? I had my, I had my fingers. I had two fingers. I was like this. I was like that, and so upside down W. But you had so you had the two fingers. I had in two the fingers pocket. in my pocket, and I had my other fingers like this. So oh, he was it, like okay. upside down W. That's white. Was this and, an old person? No, he was a young person. And so I'm like, I go, how do you know this? And he's like, well, you know, my cousin was a knew a guy who it's always fourth party, right? It's all, it's always fourth party. It's always knows a guy that knows a guy and they have a lodge down in the swamp next to the chicken factory. And I'm like, give me an address. Like really, if, Hey, if you're out there and you know, somewhere in the greater Tennessee area where the clan hangs out, give me an address. I would love to go see these guys and laugh at them. Uh, Cause they're going to be, they're going to have no teeth. <laughs> they're going to have one rebel flag and there's going to be six of them. And they probably can't put a sentence together. They're not real. I don't want to say they're not real people. 
They're just not real people. It's not a, it's not this, it's not this crazy boogeyman organization that everybody pretends it is. They destroyed it in the thirties guys. Yeah. I think most, if you, you can't, if you found it, if you, if you can assemble, they can go after you for the RICO act. So if you found it and took the robes off, you would find FBI credentials. Probably. It's probably, if you, if you go somewhere and you see, you see like a, a showing, it's probably three FBI guys, two ATF guys, and maybe a dude from the department of justice. And none of them know that the other guys are agencies guys. And they're all writing cases on each other. It just, that's how stupid it is. Anyway, didn't you say, you know, a place where there's, do you know a place? Clans Cause stuff. I'll go. I mean, I'll go. I'm not a. I'm not a. I here. Here's the. Here's the thing. I'm not afraid of anybody who puts a fucking hood on. Have you seen the? Have you seen the black dude that sits out in front of uh, Ku Klux Klan rallies or or oh, yeah, white who pride collects, shit? Who collects robes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What or so? There's some organization called Fire. I cannot watch YouTube for more than a video where they show that where they don't fucking yeah. show that and i'm like okay I'm, i've seen enough of this i've seen it probably a thousand times right so you can click on the thing to not see the ad again it won't disable it they are fucking i i need to find out who does their marketing because i need to hire that marketing firm that's what we need that firm like where they're going to show our clip to every motherfucking person that watches five seconds on youtube and whoever was- that co- whoever's doing their marketing genius and ultimately, what I'm, I guess I'm boiling down to say is that there, there are organizations out there. There are people that get together and drink beer and, and talk shit about other races. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter. They're, they're all out there. Is the, the truth of it is they don't have the reach that matters. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's 10 guys in the swamp burning crosses and drinking beer and, you know, saying bad things about Jewish people. It has no reach. And it is doing nothing. It is doing nothing against the Jewish community. It doesn't have reach. Same thing with the black community. The black community, if if uh, you know you know if the clan, if the clan came to, if the clan came to Camden, Tennessee, and wanted to have a parade, I don't think it will work out the way they think it would work out. Even here in Camden, Tennessee, right? It, they just they don't have the reach. They don't have the message that is real anymore. That's the same thing with the stupid. Uh, that, what is that night of the, 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 the polo shirt guys with the, <laughs> the, the polo shirt yeah, guys with the torches, right? Called? Uh, th- there's no, the only reason why they had reach and the only reason why anybody knows about them because crazy people, because crazy it. people went down there and got in a fight with them. The, all you're doing, all you're doing when you are on the liberal side, waving that, waving that flag is you're encouraging them. As a matter of fact, I'll bet that they have more members now than they did before that solely because of, of you. you. It's just, it's a, it's a bunch of horse shit. It really is a bunch of horse shit. There's nothing you can't, if you work hard, if you work hard and you apply yourself, there's nothing you can't achieve in this country. doesn't matter what color you are. doesn't matter, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, doesn't matter whether you're LGBTQ plus whatever. Doesn't matter if you apply yourself, you can accomplish anything in this country. Doesn't matter what race, nationality, color, uh, language. If you apply yourself, you can accomplish anything in your in this country. And that's the problem with most of these people who are making these dog whistles is they're not applying themselves, and that's they're not applying themselves. They're using fear in order to generate financial gain. I mean, look at Black Lives Matter. They didn't do anything for Black Lives Matter. They stole the money and bought themselves million dollar mansions and paid off their their papa's daddies. It it's it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. If you if there's you know again, if there's a if there's a Ku Klux Klan rally in Nashville this week, call me. I will go and I will go with you and throw rocks at those motherfuckers because they're just dumb. They are dumb. But again, there's just going to be five of those guys. Like it's, it's, it's almost, it's almost like, I'm, I know I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a dog whistle term. Okay. It's almost like beating up retarded people. Cause that's what they are. They're, they just are. They don't have anything going in their life. They're not willing to apply. They're not willing to apply the necessary skills in order to move up and better themselves. They are creating a fiefdom in their trailer park and that's the dog whistle that they want to hear in the trailer park. But so, outside of that, outside of that small pond, they're just stupid goldfish. So the the lady, this lady is constantly like, 
everything's racist and racist right. and it's, racist. It's and, getting her views. And, and people are saying, well, can you show me the victim? Like, can you introduce me to the victim? But there's not, a, there's not. You're, she's a, she's just a very grumpy, angry, doesn't wear makeup, fucking gelatinous. Just, just. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that. Like you, you can smell her through yeah, her picture. Yeah. I wouldn't say that there's not victims. Because there are victims of racism. Like sure, true, I'm sure there are. But true victims of racism, but she don't know any of them. Correct, and there's no, and she has no. All of her pictures are her with white folks. Yeah, she don't that's know all, any of them. That's all it is. So, our giveaway, <laughs> our giveaway is oh, giveaway. July 31st. We're giving away uh, to a Patreon member a whole bunch of stuff. All of the gear that we've made on the full build videos will be given away on July 31st. If you uh, want to participate in that all you have to do is be a just be a patreon member cost five bucks so join join our patreon we're going to assign numbers to every one of those persons use a random number generator and whoever wins gets everything that we built on the videos i'm going to go to patreon right now we had some questions last week but we didn't end up um doing well, we didn't do the one video because brandon wasn't here when he needed to be I don't think we're going to be able to do this. Oh, because I, I had a tooth. I don't have a... Uh, I got a gold tooth. I have no internet here. I've got the questions. You have questions? Oh, questions? Okay, throw right. the questions out. Let's hear them. You have internet and I don't have internet here? No, I screenshotted the questions last night. Good call. Good. Wait a minute. Why don't you have internet in here? You've got I don't Elon know. Musk satellites hovering over I, your... I don't know, man. I don't know what's up right now. I'm going to find them, but I did screenshot I think the Russians are, are secretly taking out... Let's uh, talk about uh, self, Self-Reliance Festival will be October 14th and 15th. We're doing a two-day radio class prior to that. Evan Dixon's putting on. We're doing a half-day... Uh, when you say prior to, you mean like October 13th? Okay. Yes. October 13th, October 12th and 13th. You're fucking me up here. Uh, yeah, you're... Uh, okay, let me go with my spiel that I Let's have. Let's hear your spiel. October 14th and 15th is Self-Reliance Festival. The two days prior to that is a two-day... Zero to Hero radio class that Evan Dixon from Radio Made Easy Which is, gonna is be putting the on. The 12th through the 13th. Okay. And also on one of those days is a half day medical class from Chuck Peoples from Homestead Medical. On the Monday following, we're having a poultry processing class. And Monday, Tuesday, Combat Art Training will be here doing a Homestead patrolling class. It is a two day Homestead patrolling class. That is separate from Self-Reliance Festival. He will also be giving a presentation during Self-Reliance Festival. And it's so that if you want a sampling of what that looks like. Does he need an aggressor? Can I be in the woods I'm, shooting blanks I'm at him? I'm sure you could do Op 4 for him. I could shoot blanks I'm at him? 100%. He would love to have I got you. a whole Russian uniform I could wear, so it could be like 1980s. He would love to have you. Yeah. So Self-Reliance Festival, we're going to have, I don't even know who's all on the roster right now. There are tons of people coming. This will be our sixth Self-Reliance Festival. We'll have upwards of a thousand people here. You guys have all been to the events. What do you think the coolest thing about Self-Reliance Festival is? If you were, if you were talking to somebody and they're like, hey, why should I go to this thing? The coolest thing is just, uh, just the different characters that are going to show up. Everybody's got a little, a little take on there's always a little different take on something. So if you, I don't know, let's say you, let's say you're saving sugar. There's going to be somebody here that's going to be like, you know, if you do this with the sugar, it'll last 400 years. <laughs> or what, there's always somebody who has a different take on things, and they they or it, maybe not just a different take. You may be like, uh, I don't know, you're putting A batteries in your radio, and then there's going to be somebody here that's like, well, you know. If you did this and this, and you put these three things together, you eliminate the A batteries. Or there's there's always a different take on a on a subject. Whatever you think, like if you're a subject matter expert on the AK-47, there's going to be somebody here that's going to go, yes, but if you do this, you're going to be like, holy shit, yeah, that's a little cooler <laughs> or better or whatever. And then you know, it's just it's good to get it's good to you know see new new faces and old faces and talk to people. So it's pretty good. I like it. Do you have EMP shields at your house? I don't have any EMP shields. Are we going to put them there? Are you ready for them? No, I don't know if I'm ready for them. All right, well, for anybody who wants, e wants an EMP shield, if you use code SOE, it'll give you $50 off your purchase. Will he come out to my house and set it up? I can get somebody to set it up for you. Because I need a, what I really need is I do need a house EMP shield that will protect my generator. Got it. Yeah, Done. that's really what I need. So if you use code SOE, 
at EMP Shield, and you can stack them. So if they have a coupon or a discount going somewhere, you can use our discount also. It'll give you $50 off, and uh, they have them for UTV side-by-sides. They have a vehicle version. They have for your home. They have them for your business. So check out EMP Shield and uh, go get your EMP Shield. Uh, by the way, the federal government just came out and said they're going to ban gas generators, so there's yeah. that too. Yeah, and, and they, they do seem to be moving in that direction. Yep. Gas, they, they want to take away your ability to not need them is what this is coming down to. What do you got for questions? Let's uh, end this and then tell them to go over to the Patreon. All right, guys, if you want to see the Patreon questions, jump over to Patreon and the video will be there. Thanks for uh, hanging out, guys. We are going to go eat lunch. Ah!